Old World Florida. Old World Florida. Old World Florida. Dude, I'm telling you, dude. Dr. Narco Longo came on and dropped the hammer of the guy. America's mother, daughter of Atlantis. God sent the weatherland. The devil sent the Spanish. Florida is Eden, the phantom of Newton. Carly is deception. So Florida is the truth. Welcome to Florida, baby. What's up, guys? How's everyone doing, guys and gals? And, of course, our other <laughs> genders out there on this holy day of trans awareness, you know, as far as America is concerned. But as we're all filing in here, let us know how we're sounding. Let us know how the audio is. I'm outside. But a happy Easter, everyone. I was only joking. Boys and girls only <laughs> in this court, in this uh, church, but basically, happy Easter. We're going to be dispelling some myths, promoting the one true son of God, savior of mankind, and pretty much just uh, slaying demons, exposing deceptions, bloodthirsty public rituals that are going to be coming up in the, you know, in the world, world stage, and um, getting into all the symbolism behind Easter, but we've got Al Diggity Dog here, author of The Charter, and that's also big news, you got a lot of rap stuff in the CIA rap, you know, what would you call it, almost like uh, everyone knew it, but uh when they admit something after the fact, disclosures, a lot of disclosures coming out in the rap world. Big time. So we're, we're going to have something coming up about that soon, but it's Easter. We're going to be talking about Easter. What's up, Alan? Hey guys, what's up, man? Uh, Christ is risen. We're T posing on everybody because uh, the one eternal King will be discussed today. And I think that the gravy will get so piping hot to the point where it purifies and becomes water, holy water from the Atlantic Ocean and beyond. So I'm very excited for the stream. I'm very excited to be here. Um, I'm excited to get into it because we we got a good one here today, folks. So we yeah. got a great one. For real. So just starting off, Easter. Is it okay to say Easter as a Christian? Is Easter really a pagan deception? You know. That's something that I see a lot of Christian truthers running into. And it's like this endless, you know, paranoia of like, oh, everything's a conspiracy. Everything's satanic. Everything's this or that. We're going to be ironing it out once and for all here today. What's actually evil, what's actually satanic, and what's actually just ingrained in nature and observable every year and why the sun is not antithetical to Jesus, why any kind of allegories 
attached to Jesus don't debunk him. They only bolster him and vice versa. You know, the physical son of God. Blah, blah, blah. But I just want to start off with Easter, the name, right? People always talk about something and they skip right over the name. Forgive me, this uh, water pump here is turning on. I don't know if that's going to be loud, but um, Easter. You always hear people saying Easter. Oh, no, that's actually evil. You know, that's actually this or that. Oh, that's Roman. That's, you know, false teachings. That's all attached on afterwards. And that is true. Some of it is attached afterwards. However, the word Easter is used once in the New Testament. So it's not entirely a, uh, you know, false creation. But let's address kind of the elephants in the room that a lot of truthers always talk about is Ishtar, Astarte, Ashtaroth, Esther, um, Ostera, you know, all of these goddesses who are representative of Venus, the dawn, springtime, all these things. What you're seeing is not a debunking or a counter argument to the Christian Easter. You're seeing just other cultures, representations, their interpretations. Everyone sees the same story in the sky. There's no one satanic false doctrine that trumps them all. Everyone's seeing the same word of God in the sky. Adam and Eve did not have a printing press or an inkwell. So God wrote them the scriptures in the stars. Now you can blame some people for misinterpreting them. But when you look at the word Easter, you cannot deceive yourself. Look at it and think about it. There's some bugs here. Forgive me. Easter. You're celebrating Easter because Easter is a celebration of the spring equinox. Now. Hang on, Christians. Don't freak out. This is not anti-Christian. This is not a astrological, you know, pagan holiday. They're one and the same. One and the same. It is complete paranoia, complete superstition to start listing off all the goddesses who name like Easter and say that debunks this one or this or that. They're all celebrating the East and the fact sun is rising in the east. Jesus himself likens, in his own words, likens himself to the sun. Almost all the apostles liken him to the sun in the sky. The son of God chose that word for a reason. Now, the sun is, at the very least, is representative of Jesus. Now, at the very worst, Jesus is no more than an allegory representing the sun. So either way you look at it, the sun rising in the east is what everybody is celebrating on Easter. Now you have your Passover and we're going to explain why this is, you know, a week after the spring equinox, 10 days after the spring equinox, March 21st. And I would also want to press Christians, big church going Christians who maybe have an issue with astrology. Why is it that, how is it that the date for Easter is determined? The date for Easter is determined using astrology. Every denomination, astrology. So we're going to get into that, but let's just start off with Easter is a Christian holiday. Easter is the celebration of the sun, the sun's renewal in the sky, the rebirth, the conquering, the start of spring, and then summer, which is the kingdom of heaven, you know, warmth and abundance and all this and that. Everyone's celebrating the same thing. The pagans, these neo-pagans need to stop getting triggered by Christianity, and the Christians need to stop getting triggered by the neo-pagans and all mentions of ancient mythology and things like that. So here, check in. How's the audio sounding? 
You sound good to me. What, let's see what the chat has to say. They said it sounded good earlier, but that was you brought up some really good points, man. This is huge. This is a substantial stream. <laughs> so Easter is a Christian holiday. Now let's talk about Passover, because obviously Easter is kind of an extension of Passover. You have your Last Supper, your whole, you know, torture scene and resurrection. But ultimately, this is positioned around Passover, and Easter is an extension of that. Passover is just the... Now, hang on here. It's not only the Jewish celebration of the spring equinox. It's many cultures, many different religions that were in and around Israel thousands of years ago were celebrating the spring equinox under very similar names, perhaps venerating some very similar goddesses. It's all one and the same. But I've got to look at my notes here. Ishtar, you have your Babylonian goddesses, Sumerian goddesses, Assyrian goddesses. Almost all of these are shared, held in common with Nordic goddesses, Gaelic, Irish culture, same thing in their mythology. Almost identical in the Native American cultures. So like I said, everyone's on the same page and stop pointing the finger. So Passover ultimately comes from the word Pisces. Right now we're at the cusp of Pisces going into Aries. Now the spring equinox is March 21st. March 21st is the end of Pisces and the beginning of Aries. That's why it's the pass over. Passing over, flipping the page, new year, Oh, and hey, all your, all my mud flutter, all our mud flutters out yeah. there, Tartarian uh, doomers, uh, you're O and a million. Why is that? Oh, another year. And guess what? There'll be another near, another year next year. No yeah. resets. No Phoenix event can stop the sun rising again. That's the beauty of the story. That's what you're celebrating. The sun rises no matter what. And at the very least, the sun rising and the infallibility of the sun represents the infallibility of Jesus. Jesus rises again. The spirit of man rises again. Man can never be conquered with this satanic winter, cold, sterile, you know, AI tactics. That's the essence here. That's what we need to celebrate every year. That's Aries, you know. But back to the Passover, the whole thing about um, the blood, the lamb, the fish. You'll notice in all the instances where they're talking about uh, Jesus resurrecting or him proving that he's still alive after he's resurrected to the disciples, that he that is the only mention ever of Jesus eating fish. So this brings up another good point. Is Jesus a vegetarian? Was he a pescatarian? Did he ever eat meat? Now I can prove to you guys out there. Jesus Christ never consumed hooved animal and never consumed terrestrial animals. There is one passage in the Bible, I believe Luke 24, I believe, somewhere around there. I don't have it up in front of me. Where Jesus, after he is resurrected, then is told to basically prove that he's still alive. Or he, he says, I'll prove to you guys that I'm still alive, that I, you know, resurrected in the flesh. And then he takes a little bit of tiny piece of boiled fish. That's at least what it says in some of our English translations. And the King James Version even says it was fish. But when we go back to the ancient Greek and some of the, you know, Aramaic, whatever that would have been written in, you're going to see Pasha, Pasha, or Pasca, or Pashka. And Pashka is just a 
kind of a sacrament or a food that you eat around the spring equinox. So when it says that Jesus ate fish, that may be the case. And at the very worst, Jesus was a pescatarian. In one instance, never when he was alive did he even consume fish. After he resurrected, he had one tiny piece of fish to prove that he was still a human, that he still had a stomach, that he still had a body. So you could even make the argument that Jesus never had fish. Why? Because in many countries, in many cultures, what do they call Pascha or Pascha, Pascha? Bread, a little dessert, any type of, you know, thing that you eat ritualistically around that time to represent whatever you're celebrating. So it does not need be fish. However, there's a very close similarity between Pasha and Pascha, and of course, Pesca, which is fish. However, in Greek, fish is ichthys, or ichthys, I believe. Um, so whatever. Basically, Jesus was a vegetarian. After he resurrected and was no longer a human, there's a chance he had a little bit of fish with a honeycomb. That's kind of what we're celebrating around that time, too. So, so people who go and slaughter a lamb, nowhere did Jesus consume lamb. Never. And then you have also, we can look at the word lamb and why some people slaughter lamb around that time. Did you know? This is also going to go back to bread, by the way. It's a complete misinterpretation of the original text. Do you remember what the bread was called in Lord of the Rings that they ate? I don't remember. No. L lembas. Hmm. Lembas. Lembas bread. Huh. And lembas bread is a little bite and you're good for the whole day. It's like a it's almost like a granola today's like granola bar not really but it was this like elven bread that was miraculous and very good and one bite was good it's called journey bread or something like that so that's essentially what what the idea is is something that everyone can have a little bite of the same thing and that's all you're celebrating and nowhere is lamb necessitated nowhere is fish in there so if you want to walk with jesus and walk like jesus and interpret that stuff correctly i wouldn't be having lamb around this time that's not how you celebrate passover or easter all this stuff no 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 okay i also want to talk about how the reason that those are the two things that might have been on the table fish and lamb and this is hey this is the easy way out for me this is the ultimate cop out but it's also the ultimate truth is to just point to the astro theology is that again they definitely weren't talking about lamb or fish because ultimately those represent aries or sorry pisces going into aries the end of the year passing over into the beginning of the year so there's your passover and now people would say well why is it 10 days after the spring equinox why isn't it march 21st that we celebrate all this stuff if, if everything was really so synced up in every culture would we really be celebrating it kind of pieced out why is everyone on different pages you could say that's the confusion of tongues you know our times after babylon but i would say the reason it's 10 days out, I can prove it to you. Some, some of the denominations are not off. They have it correct. But the reason there's a 10-day gap, typically, you know, not always, between Easter and the spring equinox, is because they choose the full moon, first full moon, after the spring equinox. So the first full moon after the spring equinox historically has been the celebration day for many cultures. Now, they chose Sunday, 
I think it might have been, I think it was Constantine who ironed down the Sunday worship. And he did that, or at least with his, in a council that he held, I forget the name of, Labadiam or something like that, the Council of, oh, here, I did, Council of Laodicea. Huh. Laodicea, Laodicea. Constantine chose Sunday as the day forever. So weekly, the day of worship for Christianity, and then yearly, Easter Sunday, I believe. And the quote on this, which is a translation, is Christians must not Judaize, Judaize, like Judaize, you know, make Christianity more Jewish. Christians must not Judaize by, res by resting on the Sabbath, but must work on that day, rather honoring the Lord's day, Sunday. But if any shall be found to be Judaizers, let them be anathema, which means cursed and excommunicated from Christ, canon. So there you go. That's why there's a Sunday. It's not really a pagan deception. Constantine said, hey, son of God, Sunday makes sense to me. And let's do two birds, one stone here. Let's make every Sunday holy instead of Saturday. The Sabbath means Shabbat. One of Jesus's core messages in deviations from historic Judaism was that he rejected the Sabbath. Not entirely. He didn't say it's bad to, to you know rest and venerate, but he said every day is holy. Every day is equally holy to the Lord. So hold the same reverence every day of your life and you can't go wrong. Whereas his whole me message was protesting the rigid kind of, I hate saying dogma. I hate that. That's such a, you know, pussy word. But he hated the rigidity and kind of the cop-out attitude. Like, oh, if I show up every Saturday, if I say the words, if I chant the stuff, if I do the right sacrifices, my sins are absolved. I can be as shitty as I want. I can, you know, diddle as many, uh, <laughs> you know, fill in the blank as I want to, be a terrible person, scummy. And as long as I execute the sacrifices, as long as I do the incantations on the right day, I'm absolved and I'm clean and I can transfer, you know, back in the day and even to this day. He's saying no see. loopholes is what he's saying. No loopholes. Bingo. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for simplifying that. Yeah. What's your takeaway on that? Uh, it's that would be my takeaway is no loopholes like this uh, other group here is trying to use all these little tricky tactics to be uh, sinful. And I think something like the Sabbath is it's antithetical to God's creation because you're saying, I'm going to be lazy. I'm going to do nothing today. And that's my yep. holy right. And in reality, yep. I don't think um, Sunday is a great way to work. <laughs> it's a great day to get things done. It's a great day to get active. You know what I'm saying? It's one of the best days yeah. to do it. So well, the I, main, I really like what you're laying down here, man. The main point here is that Saturn's day is the veneration of Saturn, Satan. Shabbat, Sabbath itself, is the Hebrew word for Saturn. So from its core, it's always been Saturn's day, venerating Saturn. Jesus said, no, 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 no. We're done with that. Every day is sacred, and especially don't venerate that one, because it is the you know, it's it's not as favorable as Sunday. Sunday, to enjoy Sunday, the, the goal is not to take off, you know, all your duties. The, the goal is to enjoy and soak in and leave the most space for veneration on that day. Right. That's why people congregate on Sunday. No one's being deceived by worshiping on Sunday. You are no less a Christian by going to the beach on Sunday than someone who goes to a church on Sunday. And in fact, I would say Jesus probably wants you at the beach. Jesus wants you outside. Sunday yeah. is the best. Sunday is the best day to sunbathe. It's the best day for athletics. It's the best day for exercise, outdoors, grounding, watching a sunrise or sunset. Sunday. So that's just in the micro, right? In the week. 
Well, yearly, we chose a Sunday. So let me get back to that. Why do we choose Easter Sunday? Well, Constantine was probably thinking over with his astrologers and his, you know, priests and this and that. Well, if it's Easter and we're looking at the east and the sun rises in the east and east is kind of this whole rising Aries. That's where you get the word Aries, by the way. Shout out Astro Chads. Aries arise rising. So Zodiac is nothing evil, by the way, you know, for anyone who might be hung up on that. Genesis, right in the very beginning, God created the signs or God created the heavens and the stars and said, let them be for signs and for seasons. God created the Zodiac. God created the 12 signs of the Zodiac and they're more important than the seasons. Know your signs before you know your seasons. Seasons are obvious. Signs are subtle. So it's not divination. Astrology is not divination. I reject that. All true astrologers reject that. You're not interpreting any, you know, deity behind a crystal ball or behind, a, you know, cards, shuffling cards on the table. It's none of that. Astrology is the reading and the observing of the signs. That's all. Signs and seasons. So, right, would you rather be limited to a fourness, a four square understanding of nature, or would you rather, you know, uh, hone in those understandings, kind of compartmentalize in the right way with a twelveness to nature, a twelveness to the new year? It gives things more precision. You can navigate nature and the year, your life more precisely with astrology. So the signs are nothing evil. That is purely superstition. Jesus warns against astrologers. No, actually he doesn't, but the Bible warns against astrologers sometimes. It also warns against lawyers and doctors and tax collectors. Well, and you know, and prostitution. Well, one of Jesus's disciples was a tax collector. One of his followers was a prostitute. All these things. So they, it's not like they're untouchables, and astrology is never so much condemned as those professions are. Astrology is condemned because it has the potential for charlatanism, totally, for fake diviners, you know, uh, superstitious fortune tellers and readers, and I, that's what I hate about astrology is, oh, can you do do my reading, do my reading? You know, let me fucking iron out what's going on in the world and mythology and it's such so personality based today that's the astrology that gets pushed up the highest is personality astrology and oh when's my boyfriend gonna you know uh meet my mom and like all this stuff it's it's so vain and yeah not my boyfriend just hypothetical scenario there yeah yes. yeah man uh, I mean, you said so much there, and I think the core of it is that there is no separation between Christianity and nature. Rather, they are one. And I think that is yes. by far the most important thing to take away from that. And that's probably the core place where people get caught up, whether it be through uh, a religious organization or whether it be through this neo-paganism. They think there's this separation and there isn't. And it's so important to bring that up with this astrology specifically because in my view, the stars are the best representation of God. The Bible is written in the stars and maybe in the, in the past and or currently perhaps some uh, opportunistic clergy have separated people from that to seek power in this world. And I think that is sinful uh, and maybe some more nature minded pagan sort of folk, become uh, completely worshipful of nature without realizing that there are there's this Bible and there's Christianity and there's God and there's Jesus who are in, al in alignment with nature. Complete alignment. Yeah. Yeah. Like going to the beach on Sunday as a form of church, that's yep. a winner. I love yep. that. Yep. One million percent. Um, so... Moving on here, Easter, 
is a Christian holiday. Nothing wrong with looking to the east and welcoming the sun and saying, hey, hello, Jesus. Hello, sun. Hello, face of God. Hello, you know, God's greatest creation that is shining and bringing life every year, time after time. Nothing wrong with that. Christians and pagans are on the same page. Ishtar, Astarte, the east. Yes, there's planets that show up in the morning before other ones. And, you know, it's a wonderful time at the end of Pisces. Venus is exalting. So, yes, they would venerate Venus for the last hurrah before the next beginning of Aries, which is solely masculine. So this is with this 10 days between the um, March 21st and Easter is, you know, March 31st this year, today. So in the Council of Laodicea, or however you say that, Constantine, I believe, um, they ironed out Sunday. Before that, it's, and some denominations, you know, I think Orthodox Christianity uses the f first Sunday, or sorry, the first full moon after the spring equinox. So that's all you're doing is either the Sunday closest to the, um, spring equinox or the closest Sunday to the full moon after the spring equinox. I know it's a little confusing and they kind of ironed it down with a monthly Sunday, which is why it isn't totally astrologically aligned, but it is ultimately it's the same week. Everyone's in the same mood. You know, people are like, Oh, they, they erased our holidays and this and that. No, it's all in the same week. You know, things got a little spread out here and there, but Everyone can't rent out, you know, Chuck E. Cheese on the same day, right? <laughs> like, you've got a whole week of spread out. People want to celebrate. You can't shut down the streets every for every culture on the same day. And, yeah. Yeah, it's, so, it's interesting, man. When you, when you said Passover, I could not help but think the peace is over. Passover. The peace is over. We're going into yes. Aries. Yep. Yep. Pass like, is absolutely. Yeah, Pisces is like, over. Some people after the Passover may may want to go to war with God and God's creation versus other folks might want to become more in align with it, you know, mm -hmm. and be fruitful and multiply and, you know, rejoice in the uh, resurgence of life we get with the spring equinox. Hundo P. Hundo P. I think we got Jimmy here. Jimmy, what up? Let him settle in for a little bit. We'll throw him in. But, uh. Birth of the sun, we covered that. You know, springtime, the sun is renewed. Spring equinox. Let's get into the egg. People get freaked out. You know, Christians are so superstitious, sensitive, insecure in their faith. So afraid that they're going to, you know, go to hell or anger Jesus by somehow, you know, laying an Easter egg or... You know, just hearing that the, you know, Easter is the sun and plugging their ears like, oh, no, that's a false teaching. These people actually exist. These these low IQ superstitious Christians actually exist who believe that the rabbit is anti-Christianity or that the egg is anti-Christianity. What are we celebrating here? Let's break it down. Number one, you've got the egg. Yes, everyone kind of knows. It's pretty obvious that you have the reproductive symbolism of Aries, Easter, the east, the sun rising. The sun rising is very, you know, it's suggestive, basically. It is a sexual arousal, that word arouse arise you know the sun is coming <laughs> did you ever hear people say let the sun you know shine on your face the sun come all over you people say that all the time and i they're like do you not hear the double you know sexual uh meaning in that but they always say it the sun come all over the, the, people say this all the time 
and it never bat an eye. And the sun rising is in itself reproductive, is in itself a boost of reproductivity. That is spring. That's what, that's what it is. Nobody wants spring to not come. Nobody wants the light to not come. That is what everyone's celebrating. So when you have your um, re, you know, your fertility worship, everyone's on the same page. Once again, everyone wants fertility. Nobody doesn't want fertility. So Christians who think that they're, you know, saving themselves a trip to hell by turning a blind eye to anything that has to do with fertility, they're not getting anywhere. They're only isolating themselves from nature. And then vice versa, you know, pagans who think that fertility worship is outside of Christianity, also just burying their head in the sands, you know, shutting themselves off from from the mainstream for no good reason. And it's not even really the mainstream. Christianity is more under attack than paganism ever will be, right? Christianity is the punk rock of religion. The King James Version Bible is the punk rock of of uh, of spiritual literature, printed under defiance of every Christian, you know, uh, church in the world. Queen Elizabeth was excommunicated. Well, they were already, you know, expelled. But Queen Elizabeth was had an assassination order put out on her by the Pope because she green green lit the beginnings of what would become the king james version bible oh yeah that's punk rock that is the you know anarchist cookbook of its time and it shattered it blew people's minds so i know it's a little played out today and you've got your boring preachers and your boring churches you know just moaning on about nothing here we'll throw a jimmy in like me that might be what i am but What's up, Jimmy? Happy oh, Easter, no. gentlemen. Happy Easter, bro. What a beautiful day it is. Yeah. What's up? What's up? Well, I didn't know that about uh, Lizzie the First. There, she was. She was punk rock. I mean, she. Sure. They say, you know, oh, the Virgin Queen. You know, she never found a partner and all this kind of stuff. And apparently, that was because she believed her line was uh, cursed, and she wanted to end her own bloodline. When you look into the yeah. Uh, and I don't know if that's true, but she just seemed to be, she brought in John D, the the uh, fascinating wizard that he was, uh, whereas other monarchs would have wanted to banish him or kill him or burn him or something. She said, no, come on in and uh, let's see, let's gaze into the crystal ball or let's, you know, cook something up that's interesting and positive and can lead to peace and knowledge and stuff like that, you know. And uh, is have you heard much about that, that she wanted to end her line? And that's why she, she yeah. never took a husband. Yeah, I talked. To, I've talked about that a little bit. The, some people think that she may have had one famous child who she kind of protected oh. and set aside, and intentionally did not have with a you know royal like legitimate partner. Uh huh. But she she did. She may have mothered a child. That's just a theory. With you know, Francis Drake. I've got to I've got to mention it so people don't accuse me of not knowing about it. Um, okay. That. No, no, no. We'll we'll do that another time. Let's okay. focus on Easter. But yeah, just <laughs> but, summing but, up. But I yeah. agree. Um, I've always had a. I was raised not really religious, but I went to a Christian school here and Catholic school there. And generally speaking, I was pretty underwhelmed by the whole experience. And uh, I was told in school to don't don't ask that question. Don't think that. And a lot of teachers would say, it's it is because it says it in the Bible, whatever. And so you know, there were people just not quite doing their job uh, very well, and it turned me off. But now through astrotheology, through looking at it through a zodiac uh, lens and seeing potentials for religious tales to just be retellings of things that are maybe more complicated, uh, that are in the stars, that are ancient, that are fixed, that are not moving. And I, I love rediscovering it through this light. And uh, I love the way that the channel is going in this direction. And a lot of people are talking about, hey, I'm not just going to go and let the priest tell me how to think, but I'm going to, you know, not throw the baby out with the bathwater sort of thing. And so, sure. 
Yeah. We, Jimmy, I think hmm. you brought up a really important point because sometimes the astro theology can bring people back to Christ, back to God. Yeah, it has and for me. I had me. a similar experience, dude, where it was oh, like yeah. uh, I grew up Catholic and I had a really tough time. Yeah. I did not enjoy it. I was right. not uh, able to sit there and behave. I wanted <laughs> to move around and things yeah. like that. Yeah. So, but what brought me back to it was kind of like realizing that the astro theological layer is just one layer. And if yes, this, yeah. this thing, the Bible, God, Christianity has all these layers and all these other people, they try to debunk. Ooh, I'm a debunkeroo because there's this astro theological layer or because there is this uh, philological layer or whatever. They mm -hmm. try to debunk just because they notice the different layers. And uh, mm. yeah, similar experience. Astro theology can actually get people back into it, which I think is pretty cool. Exactly. And isn't debunking, sure, it's good. It's There's a use for it. There's a utility for it. But it's very egoic to say, no, 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 I know better. I I can see through that lie. I'll show you why I'm right and everyone else is wrong. Yes. You know, yeah. and we don't no. always need that. No. Because it, yeah. it, it, hmm. Jimmy, just real, real quick here. It's it's the number one tactic of the low IQ yeah. bell, bell curve truther. Yeah. who is top of the bell curve, not not laterally, but like at the top, like in the middle, you know, middle, right. of, the bell, middle of the bell curve. Majority the, of people. Tr truther. Well, yeah. no, who thinks that they're high IQ mm -hmm. by saying, oh, you don't know that's a conspiracy yet. <laughs> oh, you, oh, that's cute. Oh, you don't know Christianity <laughs> is debunked. Oh, yeah, you don't yeah. know both. Oh, you don't know both sides are controlled. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you don't know, you know. And yeah. it's Dude, like. It, it's super that, pretentious. That, no, no, no. It's the it ultimate. It's the ultimate cop out because you don't have to know anything about anything. Yeah, you can just say that's fake. That's yeah. that's not true. That's a deception, yeah. and that's as much as I need to know about it. And you can learn all you want, but I'm better than you because I know it's debunked. It's yeah. depressing. And, yeah. yeah, it's so and grim it's like, and bleak. It's like, sorry, pal, I didn't make it to the debunking party. Wasn't there. <laughs> You know, didn't get the memo yeah yeah i know it's just sort of like well obviously that person is displaying their you know incapability of actually finding their own way in and finding an interesting uh other take that you know it's just it's so easy to just point at everything and say it's fake and whatever controlled you know but um find your own way in and find <laughs> the beauty and the majesty jimmy you're describing the uh mud flood mindset yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah forward. Yeah. And yeah. sure, look, those photos are fascinating. Oh, yeah. Um, where are the beautiful cities in America? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the evidence is there, all the proofs there. But is that something that is going to help the awakened, uh, you know, switched on minds that are trying to get through and navigate this really difficult point of history and trying to steer us towards the light and and towards positivity and rebuilding and, and uh, you know, uplift? Or is that like, we're going to sit around and talk about everything that's been killed and burnt and melted and destroyed. And, Oh, don't worry. They're just going to do it again. You know, I mean, that's, right. that is bleak and you can, you can see it as a point of like, sure. There's a lot of evidence. You can sort of understand it, but let's not like dwell on that. You know, let's talk about, I don't know. Let's talk about things that are, uh, that are strong and powerful and can bring us up and breathe the spirit into us to, to empower us to, to make this world what we want it to be. Shell, yeah, man. That's how I'm feeling. We just got back from church. There was a beautiful, massive uh, Easter Sunday overflow. It's a huge, it's, it's not a cathedral, but it's a massive church. Yeah, that's and true. That's Trump's church. It is. That's right. It was where the funeral was for uh, wow. Melania's mom, was it? Right. It's a so, stunning Jimmy. building. And it was I, I got to share this with you in regards yeah. to you just went to church and you mentioned cathedrals. We mentioned the mud flood mindset. Yeah. So I would say that this, that the cathedrals are power plants. Mm -hmm. okay? And when the cymatics are going, the organ is going, people yeah. are singing. That's right. The people are being powered. I loved your Spirit. Instagram clip about yeah. that recently. Yeah. yeah. It's the, the people, people that are, are being powered with the Holy Spirit. And so the mud flood retardarian mindset actually seeks to separate people from that Ooh, and have yeah. this nihilistic attitude where they can be reset by the controllers yeah. Yeah. like a fucking video game yeah. any day. And yeah. they just lose, 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 lose. <laughs> yeah. and, they, and they have trouble getting out of that because they're addicted to it. 
like yes. a drug. And yes. when people say, oh, you know, this person, oh, they're just making videos. Oh, it's no, they're doing something very, very, very nefarious. Yes. They know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And what what the people, the viewers are engaged in is voyeurism and escapism. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we're here to put an end to that. Yeah. And we're yeah. going to yeah. give them the pure holy water no longer gravy fucking holy water yeah <laughs> no, no dog. can i can i touch on the uh antiquitech aspect yes. so uh it's a great point l dog summed it up you know wonderfully that the mud flutters the tartarian you know basically reset pop you know matrix simulation theory types Basically, you'll never ever turn on any of this Antiquitech. None of those buildings will ever resonate again. Mm. Unless you fill them with Jesus. None of those buildings have anything to do with source. <laughs> or, you know, none, so none of those buildings have anything to do with, you know, that's really, that really sums it up is this, the whole source, the fear mm. of naming god or applying a yeah. masculine you know presence to the decider the creator that basically you can't fill those cathedrals with anything but jesus jupiterian energy benevolence that extends beyond you know one lifetime and one reset that's another thing you know if jesus died for all our sins like that's the resets of all resets and we're yeah. going to get into why that is the sacrifice of all sacrifices mm. and no sacrifices ever since then have done anything really except yeah. you know maybe move a pebble an inch yeah maybe they, they can't move a boulder any any sacrificing happening after jesus's death or the the passing over from the age of aries into the age of pisces no blood magic has any sway anymore. Jesus voided it all by being the sacrifices, the sacrifice of all sacrifices. And he freed mankind from the kind of spiritual slavery that they were under after mm -hmm. the flood. And mankind did have this, you know, unhealthy relationship with blood sacrifice. Yeah. Now, whether whether that was ordained by heaven or whether that was a, you know, feudal way of just kind of passing by when they were under not favorable circumstances. Regardless, Jesus cleared that all up and brought true worship back to the world. You cannot sacrifice away your sins mm. personally or nationally. Transference. Yes, and you cannot deposit your <laughs> sins into a chicken or a lamb. No. <laughs> no way. So this is the great point. This is the big segue that we're coming to here. But I also mm. want to get something out of the way first is, you know, speaking of people dogging on Christianity. Hey, mister, what are you doing over here? What are you doing over here? Look at this big boy. <laughs> Prowling. Hey, mister, mister. Lion. I'm going to show in mister. His kingdom. Look at those eyes. Prowling. Yeah, Dude, he's fierce. Beautiful. Looks like a pharaoh. Mm -hmm. Wow, very nice, very handsome boy. Yep, <laughs> oak, oak leopard, yeah, Florida swamp tiger, right there. <laughs> um, so yeah. the Tataratods, okay. Yeah, well, well, here, coined here expression. let's just get into how. Some people are dogging Christianity even more today, politically. Yeah. You know, what is this that we've got going on with Biden mm. labeling trans Easter day. as the national trans day of visibility? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's it's insulting. a load of BS that's insulting to Christians, of course. It's insulting to the sun in the sky. It's insulting to Mother Nature. It's insulting to the Zodiac, to God himself, you know, the author of it all. So, but who cares? You know, literally, it's also just the weakest, most flimsy attack they could ever attempt. Yeah. So literally, who cares all at the same time? Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's not going to work. Yeah, I'm getting eat up by bugs here. So yeah. 
Forgive me I for mean, dancing. Have you got sacrifice, any essential oils? Sacrifice is really just an uh, it's an absurd way to get a, rid of your own sins. Yeah, you to, lazy. You need to thank God and ask God for forgiveness. Yeah, that's what you need yeah. to do. You don't need to it's, sacrifice animals. It's, it's a very mercantile, though, isn't it? It's like, okay, look, we'll put it, we'll make a shell corporation, and then that company will take the fall. And if if there's yes. too many tax liabilities, you know, it won't be us that goes down. It's the corporation that gets mm -hmm. sued. You know what I mean? It, that's yeah. the way like uh, crony capitalism works. It's not, uh, I I did a bad thing. It's this company did, or you know, I don't know so much about it, but you know, shell companies and and tax havens, and it's all very like, just put it over there and yeah. let let it go down you know uh, yes. monsanto is a good example oh monsanto monsanto yeah totally evil and the whole world found out and the whole world uh critiqued them and and rightly so and l legally as well now um it was all passed over to gates get all gatesy and he's there running it in the headquarters of monsanto they just changed the name to the uh gates foundation food alliance bill and right. Melinda. you know like but standard it's, it's, oil is the yeah. same situation where it's like standard oil, the monopoly got broken up, but it just went into seven or six different companies. Right. It's know? the same stuff. It's just a ah, different name, yeah, different person, same headquarters, same building, same yeah. everything. So, guys, we're really going to sink our teeth in to this whole sacrifice argument. Oh, my goodness. And it this just keeps getting this crazy. Thing. But there's one segment we got to get through first with the trans day of visibility. Easter, something I didn't mention when I was rattling off you know some of the easter history connections is florida florida guys florida like easter island gets its name for the fact that it was discovered on easter Whoa. Or, or during easter celebrations so you've got your um pascua florida is a Spanish and Greek Easter festival, feast, mm. flowery procession that is, you know, brought to Florida by the Spanish. And they discovered Florida, we're told, during that celebration. Um, not perhaps Easter Sunday, but on during their Easter celebration. So Easter Island, same deal. That's why Easter Island got its name. Florida for Pascua Florida, which means flowery festival or flowery feast in Spanish and Greek. And that's where Florida gets its name. So yes, Florida had all these flowers that played a part in it. That's why the name stuck and the double meaning always wins. You know, the triple meaning, more meanings to the word. That's the winner. So that's where you get Florida, Pascua Florida. Pasca, that's what Jesus was eating. When it, you know, in, in Luke, when it says Jesus was eating something, it doesn't say fish. It's very close to fish, and you you might be right for interpreting it as fish. But when you look back at Pasha or Pasca, it's a sweet loaf to some cultures. So mm. yes, you know, England might have written it down as as fish, but what he's actually doing, I think they chose the astrologically correct food. Aries, Pisces, lamb, fish. You always see that with with, uh, with Jesus. Mm -hmm. I do not think that's a diet choice. So nowhere does it ever say Jesus ate lamb. Nowhere does it ever say Jesus ate fish in the flesh. Only after he resurrected, he had a little... Okay, so blah, blah, blah. That's the Pashka, Passa, Passover, the Pasqua. That's where you get Florida. Pasqua, Florida is the festival. And it's also Passover, like all wrapped up into one. So Florida is right here. And, you know, this whole, this whole, uh, wow, pool, this whole pool of connections. Florida was discovered on Easter, during Easter celebrations. Wonderful. Okay. And that's so Easter in Spanish today as well. It's holy, Pascua, right? Yes. But, but that, that then would indicate that Florida is sort of a holy land. Like <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> a little bit, yes. Yeah. But here, I want to get into something real quick. The whole trans day of, of mm. deception or whatever mm. they're making it. Why would they choose Easter? Well, I hate to bring everything back to Florida, but it kind of leads leads us there anyway. 
Did you guys know that the origins of the LGBTQ agenda may have their beginnings, you know, come from Florida? How is that? Well, we know the Federal Reserve came out of the Temucua tribe with the humans, the child sacrifice at Jekyll Island, northeast Florida. Well, that same tribe, the Temucua, who John D. Rockefeller had not one but two vacation homes in their tribal territory, Jekyll Island and Ormond Beach, Florida, both built essentially on top of a burial mound complex. Well, what else was the Temucua known for? They were two spirits. They were two spirits. Almost half the population, according to some authors of the Temucua, were hermaphroditic, meaning they weren't warriors and they weren't housemakers or women. They were in-betweens. So hermaphrodites is what they observed when the French and the Spanish came Almost half the population were this in-between population. Now, how does that connect to Rockefeller any further than the fact that him and his family chose to live in Temucua territory at the northern end in uh, Ormond Beach, at the southern end, or sorry, at the northern end in Jekyll Island, at the southern end in Ormond Beach? Well, did you guys know that John D. Rockefeller Jr. was raised as a girl until he was nine. Oh no! By by John D. Rockefeller himself. Of course. Did it's... you know that he was dressed in his girls, his older sister's dresses until he was wow, you know, almost nine. Right. Hand me downs. Sick. And that's what they're doing now. I'm I'm trying to find on Instagram this. Uh, this compilation of all the images of all the celebrities, uh, yeah. actors in Hollywood and the singers, Adele, all their kids. Why, what right now, why are all of the most famous people having kids and then swapping yeah. their genders? The well, Angelina Jolie, they, they're dressing them in the wrong, you know, what's, what's going on. They're all doing it. Yes. So, well, let's, let's link this a little further. Even did you know, so it's not only just he was raising his kid as a girl a little bit. This was the heir to his fortune. Yeah. And, you know, both John and his and Junior were, um, they kept a ledger their entire life of every transaction they ever made in their life. And <laughs> transaction is even like an overstatement. Like if they gave a penny to a beggar, they recorded, oh. they recorded that as a loss as of one <laughs> now they were so on the books they were charted like okay the, not to drag on but they were so precise with their finances and this and that <laughs> so you were talking about sacrifice before and all this stuff well that's how he raised the heir to his throne in a dress for the first nine years of his life then he, you know, I guess he switched him over to just full boy, started buying him his own clothes. And they argue that this was, this was out of frugality, that he was, they didn't want to buy new clothes. So they just dressed him in the girls, um, left hand-me-downs. Lol, rock His older sister. Great show. I mean, it's, it's richest ridiculous. Richest people in the world. Exactly. And they were so already the richest people in the world. Yeah. So Does that speak then, to hermeticism? The hermetic practice yeah of, we're gonna i'm gonna do a whole video on that coming up okay. but i want to bring up happy rockefeller so it's not just one instance <laughs> uh, there's a bit of a fixation here nelson rockefeller i believe was married to happy rockefeller jimmy yeah would you mind pulling up a picture of oh happy yes rockefeller? The, the first the first image we're going to show here of of all the things we've talked about this is what you guys need to see but uh Happy Rockefeller was, looks like a guy, kind of acted like a guy. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people passed that topic around in the whole Mike Michelle Obama. Uh, the French know. President Macron, uh, Brigitte yes. Macron. Yeah. You got that in the news too, yeah. right at the same time, leading up to this whole Easter decision. It all kind of leads back to Florida, especially with your Grand Theft Auto 
release in Vice City leading up to this too. Oh, um, yes. Blah, 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 blah. Floridian origins, ancient Floridian origins of the LGBT, LGBTQ agenda. Upcoming, going to be covered in two upcoming videos of mine. One about Jekyll Island, the other about Ormond Beach and the Rockefellers being super into the Tamukua tribe. Wonderful. Um, shell, yeah. This is happy Rockefeller, guys. So, I mean, it's a site that's all very familiar to us these days of uh, ah, men in dresses. Um, here's a good one. I'm just going to share this. Dang it. It used to let me switch screens. There's some, you know there's some ones. Guys, Here we're we go. seeing what you're talking about with the whole trans thing. We're seeing it on different levels because all these rappers, they're all wearing nail polish. Athletes, yeah. young men are starting to wear nail polish, and it's just a little weird. It's yeah. yeah, and a little crazy. Oh, dude, I was driving through the, the heart of the country, like... Oh, that's that's one. That's the picture, Jimmy. Yeah. That's the one right there. It's a bit blurry. That's the winner. But oh my goodness! And and the <laughs> only, just look, just keep looking, is there's younger instances where he he sorry she looks like this. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. He's and right. if you're happy, if you're happy, just wanna you know, I'm into words. Okay, I'm into words here. If you're happy. What did they used to call that? <laughs> Gay. Yeah. 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 So That's it. a little bit of a double meaning here. Mm -hmm. You know, might be stretch, might be stretching that, might be looking into that a little bit more than I need to. But um, that looks like a dude to me yeah. in terms of jaw size. Like a tipsy dude. And, and brow ridge. Yeah. And there's a lot of other instances that the neck is thick you know yeah the adam's apple the nose yeah so um, just just food for thought guys if you want to look into rockefeller you know there's a whole Bush. lot more to this than just one kid the heir to the throne getting raised as a girl mm -hmm. for a little yeah. bit yeah yeah a lot of questions speaking of which we just did that um astro chads on aries right this is crazy speaking of the trans thing so caitlin jenner aka bruce jenner has yeah. his true node is in Aries. Wow. Meaning that I predict that Caitlyn will go full <laughs> Hulk mode if angered, and we will see the return of Bruce. Bruce is coming wow. back. Oh, so, yeah. Wasn't yeah. there a moment of that on some talk show? Oh, maybe it was someone else. Well, but Caitlin, Caitlin, a.k.a. Bruce, is doing a uh, sports <laughs> podcast with Lamar Odom. Who's no like, way. A for, a no way. Podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, it's gonna be hilarious. It's gonna be great. So they're doing a sports podcast, and my prediction is that over the course of that, it's sort of a locker room atmosphere. <laughs> Caitlin, serious. So Caitlin will get a little angered. Maybe Lamar will do something as simple as just punch her elbow, and Caitlin's gonna be like, "Hey, Lamar, yeah, I'm a former Olympian. <laughs> you know, we're talking about sports all day. We're gonna see Bruce come back. Yeah, Bruce is coming back. Oh, I'm yeah. praying for it. Praying yeah. for it. Just hoping that because. Bruce never got the uh, operation, right? Bruce is still no. fully Bruce. Still yeah, packing. Exactly. Bruce still is still packing, packing. heat. <laughs> yeah, That's yeah. great. Bruce is still an Respect. Olympic athlete. Like, yeah, yeah. He's, just, he's Ooh, just in a phase right now. Jenner and gender. Wow, good one, guys. Ooh. Wow. Bruce, gender. Jenner. Jenner. It's a little bit generic. Kendall, Kendall. Mm. Oh, that's a good one, too. Yeah. Hey, Al, you mentioned rappers and stuff. I mean, Candace yeah. Owens has been covering uh, some of the different reports about um, who's the comedian that, that talks about the whole the, the system that they all have to go through. And Kanye, I didn't know this. Kanye um, said multiple times that they, at different points, tried to get him in a dress. Like, oh, it's going to be a funny yeah. joke, like music video, like as a prank, like wear this dress, go, do this dress. And it just seems to be this thing where they... They have to get them all in dresses yeah. and even not just, you know, black rappers and actors and stuff, but like, um, what's his name? The wrestler who just did the Oscars naked. Um, yeah. John Cena. John Cena. Yeah. Yeah. That, was, he, kind of ob, that was kind of an obscene scene, wasn't that? It was disgusting. It was, it was a cringe. Obscene John Obscena. Oh, uh, John Obscena. Yeah, that's good. 
and I'm seeing Cena. But it's it's destructive of masculinity. It's and it, it was like we're talking about the the uh, the last Bond film. Um, someone mentioned the he was on his knees is the visual, and he dies at the end of it. They they seem to really want just to implant this imagery of uh, strong masculine muscly men like on their knees and in dresses and in makeup and just you know destroyed and uh, and made it made a joke of right and yeah. it's it's very uh they're desperately trying to do this yeah definitely and it's i think it's something as simple as troglodytes who control these <laughs> industries want to yeah. uh simple feel powerful by mm. making these big wizard of oz style displays of these the guys. nerds so, got in control mm -hmm. yeah that's right hey guys Jimmy, can you look up when St. John's Eve is? Yeah, sure. Please. Um, last little connection here with Florida and the LGBTQ agenda and Easter. Remember Florida being discovered on Easter? Florida having being the first place Europeans, you know, set foot and hung out with the natives in the United States. And it was jam-packed with trannies. I mean, what would you do? <laughs> so literally, like America's beginning, you know, Oh my God! Has this in it, and Statue of Walt, Liberty. Yep, good one. That's Lucifer. That's Libra to Liberty, Lib Libra. So right in between, that's Eve, evil in the truest sense. But uh, let's um. So it's twenty third of June, Saint John's Eve. Okay, so that's a little ways off, but basically Saint John's Eve was a Looks holiday, one, one of the first festivals celebrated in florida or european holidays celebrated in florida you know you had america's first thanksgiving three of them before the english ever got here but then you also have saint john's eve being celebrated by the spanish or the menorcans and greeks a little bit later who came to florida but what they would do was in saint augustine they'd celebrate saint john's eve and one of the ways they would celebrate was a cross-dressing festival and this was a lot of menorcan settlers and a lot of them happened to be you know uh, conversos or what you'd call crypto jews mm -hmm. so saint augustine had a menorcan quarter kind of like you see like a jewish quarter in a lot of cities mm. and or a arab quarter things like that is that ethnically uh, spanish Men menorca Yes, so that, like Men Mediterranean. They're, well, they're kind of strange because they're part of Spain. Menorca okay. and M Mallorca are part yeah. of Spain, the Balearic Isles or islands. Oh yeah. But then, but then culturally they're super Greek. Okay. So culturally they're very Greek and they look Greek and they dress pretty Greek. Yeah. But they're also super close to Spain. So right. Menorcans came over with Greek settlers in the 1700s. Yeah. Spaniards were here in 1513 in Florida around Easter time. So St. John's Eve was something that would have been celebrated in St. Augustine area pretty early in America's history. And one of the ways they'd celebrate, like I said, was cross-dressing. And that's just, I'm noting it because that was Temucua territory as well. So it's almost like something they had in common with the natives was... Mm once a year they would dress up and have like this cross-dressing you know lgbtq tranny purge and let it know, out yeah, yeah. They, they might have let the tamuka uh in for in for a couple of drinks on that night yeah yeah they learned from them perhaps wow mm -hmm. wow well yeah so, that's that's it for the tr tranny you know and you know i say that with all good intentions nothing but love namaste for, for everyone you know that's uh not not a <laughs> i don't know can you is it are you not allowed to say that i think you can say that but uh, well, namaste we love you know all people of every shape and mutilation type that's, but, <laughs> that's um, it it's just it's not going to end well and you know with all this oh don't say anything because the suicide rates hey um do they commit suicide like after the surgery and the drugs and lit it's trying like to trying to adjust it's it's, like it's post suicide rate yeah but it's post transition right yeah so no so, one's saying uh maybe it's not a good idea to do well that. You, know? you know what you're doing is you're sacrificing yourself 
Yeah. Sacrificing your most vital essence, creative spark. Um, let's yeah. segue and here into the red heifer. Oh my goodness! Deception coming up. Yeah. Wow. Um, this is yeah. April eighth. April is the eclipse, right? Is it's right? my birthday. Yeah. That's correct. <laughs> Pat. Or April. Some, I thought some people were saying April fourth. April eighth. April eighth is the eclipse. Yeah. Yeah, and then April tenth is the deadline for this eclipse. They're saying it is the red heifer sacrifice. Yeah, is, I think is, they say they have to get April. it done by April tenth. Yeah. Oh, okay. I just know the eighth is the eclipse, and then the tenth is when they're when they're slated to. Uh, yeah. To kill these cows. Yeah. Can you um, pull up just a picture, just yeah. one picture instead of like a whole. Yeah, yeah. Um, sure. Hooray. Just one picture of the ramp and kind of the, of the altar looking thing. Sure. Yeah. So, for those who don't know, guys, we're celebrating Easter over here, like Christians do every year, and many other faiths do under different names, you know. Well, one certain tribe, one certain group, national, you know, nationalistic, ethno state, pretty much. Not exactly, literally, but um, that's kind of how they want it. Is planning something that is so despicable that it ought to be shout from the rooftops to everyone. Everyone needs to know about this. Everyone needs to be spiritually protected. But then again, you know, I might be wrong because ultimately, literally, no one cares. Nothing's going to happen, and it's very futile. So. We're going to lay it all out here, but I also hmm. want to just let that be known. We're not under any spell. We're not terrified. We're no, not. No. We're laying it out here so you can see it all and maybe don't get tripped up later. Yeah. But the ultimate takeaway here going into this, just going to let you know, it literally is such a weak, low IQ, superstitious misinterpretation of a misinterpretation by a group of probably inbred um bloodthirsty money thirsty completely soul sucked lifeless anti-sun literally anti-sun literally don't like the daylight are the same people who are piecing this whole mass sacrifice event together but like i said it's futile because Blood sacrifice has been debunked. It's been voided. The credit has been paid. There's no interest that can be charged at this point. Karmically speaking, you cannot transfer your sins into an animal. Okay? They, they, people think they're depositing their sins into an animal and it's getting wiped away. No, it's getting deposited into a universal bank of light and awareness you will be held responsible for all the blood you shed all the money what's up with the water okay it's august say what's up hey um <laughs> i beast it but yeah it, yeah it seems so, it seems like a lop at this point right yeah it seems like they're making up all these rules you've said before that um back in the babylon times they took the religious beliefs from the slave people the african yes. ethiopian jews they said ah, we have to make it look like we're you know uh spiritual and we have a rever reverence to a higher power how about we just copy them and enslave them and and we all say that we believe that kind of stuff and that's an, yes. a great excuse hey you have to let us sacrifice you have to let us conquer because it's our religion it's what we believe in but do they really I mean, that's a, that's a legitimate question. The more you look into well, it, it's like, how can you, yeah. For sure. Can we get one, one picture up? I'm ready to go. It's, yeah. it's, it's can you cool drag, up. can you drag that one oh, off? And just pull yeah. up that window. It's yeah. funny, man, because uh, I've been keeping myself sort of ignorant of this thing. And just as the layman, just as like the guy that's outside looking in, this whole situation seems fucking insane. I mean, they're trying to sacrifice a red cow, and it's just like, what the fuck, dude? Are you serious? Like, yeah, are you guys sacrifice. really doing this in, in 2024? Yeah. And it's like, 
and, I thought and then, about this, dude. It's like they're trying to make this red cow almost like a, a tick of energy. They're definitely going to live stream it, right? A tick of energy that's kind of like their blood um, sacrificed where they want everybody to pay attention to this ridiculous ritual so they can convert all that energy. That's what it seems like to me. Yes. Now, for those who need to be caught up here, we've been talking about it on a couple streams, but just the big picture is... Israel, whether nationally or as a whole religious entity, or I don't know if it's certain sects are behind it, but certain sects are definitely against it. Mm. Um, you've got the preparation for the construction of what they're calling the third temple. And leading up to that, they need to, in their eyes, sacrifice a number of red bulls, cows, in the scripture, it says heifer. That's a female multiple, cow, correct? Multiple red heifers, yeah. Female, female cow. A cow. A cow, not a bull. And they're saying red, like red fur. You know, we're going to get into the, maybe some misinterpretations here. But they're getting ready. Perfect. That's the one. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah. This is what we're looking at. They've already constructed it. So this is real. In Jerusalem, yeah. I believe. It's in Jerusalem, yep. and it is built in the same exact style that the Old Testament, the Canaanites, certain Israelite tribes built their altars. Why not stone? Why does it look like it's plastic or something? Well, no hewn stone, it says in Exodus. Why mm. no steps? No steps, it says in Exodus. Uh, it says, you know, if you consecrate an altar to me, uh, do not lift your tool upon it. No hewn stone mm. in the altar. So that's why there's no stone in the steps. It says, if you're going up to my altar, uh, make it with no steps because your nakedness can't be seen. You know, they used to wear skirts like tunics back in those days. So they would walk up a steep, like, um, walk up a steep step pyramid and everyone could see their their behind when they're going up the steps. This subtle ramp is so that you can wear whatever you want and no one can see up your dress. Does that make sense? Mm. You see how no one can kind of get under you and see what you're see into your skirt. So that's why it said no steps. So that's why you have this like handicap ramp type thing. This is the exact same style that a lot of exact same style that a lot of Native American earthworks are built into. A little bit pyramidal, but um, a little bit pyramidal, but T-shaped a little bit too, with the walkway being the center of the T. And I also just want to talk about how this is a satanic altar. Undoubtedly. No ifs, ands, or buts. This is a satanic altar. This is not welcoming a Messiah. This is not welcoming Jesus. This is not welcoming any benevolent deity. This is the blood of the innocent on an altar of the evil. This is not going to any good deities. The good God in the sky and Jesus Christ will reject and spit out this offering. It's disgusting. It's offensive. But how can I prove to you that this is a satanic altar? And this is not any, you know, uh, like libel or this is not any um, name calling. I can prove it to you. It's a horned altar. A horned altar is a Canaanite altar, which is, yes, only one of the Israelite tribes, the Canaanites, or one of the peoples that constitute the Israel tribes. But the Canaanites had horned altars. They were the ones who were most engaged, closest connected with this ancient Babylonian blood sacrifice. This is not a conspiracy theory. They'll even tell you this themselves. Okay, this is just mainstream Old Testament archaeology. Is they'll tell you, oh yeah, the Canaanites used horned altars for things like child sacrifice, animal sacrifice, uh, burnt offerings, fats, 
And what they're going to do here, I don't think they're going to sacrifice the animals on top of that. I oh. think they're going to sacrifice them nearby and then bring them up there and then chisel them, like burn them. Sorry, not chisel, like a grill them mm. on like a ember, like a plate of embers, like a burnt offering up there at the altar. Mm. But I could be wrong because it is mm. white. And it might be white so that the whole world can see the blood run down. Yeah, so I thought. White. It's like, uh, yeah, it's why. And I, it, yeah. This yeah. is yeah. overlooking the the Dome of the Rock. And, you know, what's even more, you know, sickening and, and frightening about this, uh, these intentions, is that not only this act, but what is the purpose of this act in their eyes, in their minds, it is to purify because they burn these heifers. The, the priests then will bathe in the ashes all over their body. That is supposed to purify not only them, but the entire people, these people, uh, so that they have the, um, the green light to blow up the most sacred site of the entire Islamic world, the al Asqa Mosque, the, the dome on the rock, which is in the middle of Jerusalem and has been for hundreds of hundreds of years is the most sacred place for them uh, so that they can rebuild their, their third temple, which was there apparently uh, thousands of years ago. And the Romans burnt it down. Hmm. Why? I wonder what was going on in there. What were they doing constantly? Why would the Romans go to the trouble of burning it down? I think twice, right? It was burnt down twice. And so this is the third time that they've rebuilt it um and just today i've i've found even more information about what they're planning to do in there but the whole purpose of this is is to legitimize the uh the the destruction of the most sacred site of the entire islamic world wow yeah that's substantial now also we just got to get into why are they trying to do this who are they trying to appease with by doing mm. this so i just want to point out in the bible it does not condone this. This is anti-Christian. It's actually anti-Judaism, true yeah. Judaism. Yeah. This is purely a Zionist political stunt, misinterpreting the scripture to justify some, you know, future move that they're going to make. It, whether it's the temple or another invasion or another war. And like I said, I never get into this whole doomer, you know, mindset always conquer and rise above this really isn't going to change your life much but uh but they can only do it with the support of the west they yes. they can only do any of this with yeah. american support people with don't support know about this the zionist people, christian people, world people don't yeah. know about this cbs exactly. did one little story um that is blacklisted if you try and look up a picture of this online you won't get any you only get the screen caps from the small little cbs interview that they did you cannot find an actual picture of this you can't find a, a jpeg that's yeah crisp and someone took it there it's always a screen cap from this one interview that's right and this is scrubbed from the internet now, I don't know if they're going to publicize the moment itself, but leading up to it, this is like so under-publicized. Yeah. It's under-covered. Well, guys, what you have here is a mass sacrifice event. And you could say that they've been sacrificing humans in the months leading up to this in mass, too. <laughs> but um, yeah. I didn't want to let it be known that this is not a political stance for me. This is not a race stance for me. This is not anything. I grew up with Jews. I love Jews. You know, I know everyone has to. I know everyone <laughs> has to say that before they say anything. I love everyone. But I love you know truly. Like I get along with Jewish people. Just just great. Uh, it's the it's the truth. I'm not ashamed to say that. There's no it, there's nothing wrong with Jewish people. There's something wrong with this Zionist hmm. racist supremacist attitude that some of them take on the world stage and i'm going to tell you right now i'm coming at this solely as an animal rights advocate as a vegetarian as a follower of jesus yes but ultimately it comes down to do you sacrifice animals yes or no okay youtube you're hearing me 
This is an animal rights position. Truly, and it should be for everyone. How can anyone in clean conscience condone this and think that this is somehow trying to, you know, communicate with a benevolent creator through this? This is purely satanic magic, and they've pretzeled every media company into their web, into their ass backwards explanation, and they're going to get the whole world to justify satanic slaughter on the world stage. So for the, for me, I was always, I would always go to bat for any group of people. I would always go to bat for Jews too. Okay, nothing nothing wrong, nothing bad there. But when you pull something like this, I'm out. Yeah. I'm not supporting a smidge of it. Mm -hmm. I'm not making any exceptions. No, I'm completely done. All of America should be completely done with Israel based off of this. All of America and all of Christianity and all of every religion and every Jew, as far as I'm concerned, should denounce this. Completely tune out when the time comes. You know, get the word out. Denounce it. Completely denounce any political, you know, uh, thing that they're going to try and pull after this. It's complete evil. But we're also going to get into the futility of it. I've kind yeah. of explained why blood sacrifice doesn't do anything. Mm -hmm. This is ultimately just like a WWE stunt, like <laughs> leading up, leading up to you know something else. A lop. But basically, I just want to also talk about number one. Why is it explain? You know, why does it come back to America too? Why should we talk about it? Well, they got these cows from Texas, and mm -hmm. why did they choose this date coming up? Well, it's the eclipse, the solar eclipse. And they say they're trying to usher in the new, you know, age with the new Messiah and the new temple, all this. But it's not going to change anything that a piece of steak at an out bay, outback steakhouse wouldn't have changed. Mm -hmm. Truly. Yeah. That's, not e that's not even an attack on meat eaters. Literally, go order a steak and you just debunked this whole prophecy. Clown circus trade yeah no any steak at arby's any steak sandwich at arby's is 10 times stronger magic <laughs> than, <laughs> yeah. than this charade they're gonna pull parasite this, magic this charade needs to be mocked like what comes yes. to my mind this is a burger king ritual okay <laughs> They're literally going to kill a cow and they're going to grill it. This is a Burger King ceremony. Okay? A whopper. It's, it's a joke. Like this yeah. is preposterous. What yeah. trying to do. That's that's Burger the King. best thing to do for these sort of. It's ridicule. It's mockery. Jefferson yes. said that, didn't he? He said um, the most uh, you know offensive and dangerous uh, ideas and prospects should just be ridiculed, laughed at, because yes. that's 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 the best approach here. They want to make people angry. I mean, why? What's going to happen? Yeah. Uh, when the most sacred uh, site of the Islamic world is is nuked, is blown up, and then a uh, Jewish temple is built on the top of it. Are they, is, what's Iran going to think about that? And then, you know, who are they going to ally with? It's going to, you know, potentially cause a global uh, conflict. And then good old Uncle Sam has to come in there and, uh, and sacrifice more uh, yeah. for that, for that yeah. reason, you know? So it's... Yeah. yeah, it's Tony, uh, it's ridiculous. Right. Tony, good comment there. X Games Israel 2024. <laughs> yeah. X and why? Why? What's with this whole X? You know, Twitter becoming X. T to the X. Twitter X. T to X. Tesla moving to Texas. Okay. He has X. He has a T space X. Um, all these things moving to Texas. The T X. Well, you've got your two major eclipses, recent eclipses happening in crisscrossing over Texas, forming an X on Texas near the uh, Stonehenge site of Stonehenge too. Um, oh yeah. Texas. But that's a whole other thing. Go check out my Forbidden History of Texas documentary, my most recent video. But TX, what does it all have to do with? Well, they actually got those red heifers from a special farm, a special breeder in Texas that breed flawless red heifers. 
Now, isn't it sad that they literally are just going off of cosmetics alone? They just yeah. they just scanned the market and were like, "Those are, hey, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> what's it? Hey, every Shmooly. hair has to be red. Hey, Shmooly, that one's the wet. <laughs> that one's the wettest. No, that one's the wettest. And then they're just like, uh, chose the reddest one arbitrarily. Well, they right. probably wasn't very arbitrary. Probably they yeah. chose the reddest ones from the position where the eclipse was occurring crisscrossing but here's our uh oh major sidewinder missile coming in uh oh so you know missile launch notice uh oh guys you want to know what it is what eclipses happen twice a year more than twice a year two and a half times a year every year sorry guys sorry john levy sorry archaics sorry um all the superstitious, you know, doomer, um, profiteers, charlatans. Ultimately, this eclipse is no more scary or sketchy or intimidating than the other million eclipses that happened. And life went on every time. And there's going to be two eclipses in the year after this. And then there'll be two more. And like I said, two, two and a half eclipses per year, pretty much. So what's so special about this one? Nothing, really. Like, both went over Texas. I was there for one of them. I survived. You know, did some funny stuff to my electronics. And that's mm -hmm. probably why they, they try and get the sacrifice on the eclipse. Also, I want to talk about Dune. I was eating lunch yesterday, and I decided to watch a pirated version of Dune, the second Dune as I was eating my lunch. And I only watched like the first 40 minutes. But basically, Zendaya's a dog. She's just, just she looks like someone hit her with a door, like in the face repeatedly. The car and door. Then, then she healed over and that's the result like well, 10 years later. When you go to the dictionary beauty. and you look at the term mid, there's a picture of her. Right <laughs> yeah. her. Yes, Zendaya is ridiculously <laughs> mid. She has no like curvaceousness, which is not which is not always a bad thing. That can be a great thing. But with her just frog like <laughs> shriveled, disproportionate face and like lack of upper teeth, she is pretty much just unfudgeable, we'll say. Um but regardless, they chose her to cast her. So sorry, I got sidetracked. They chose Jimmy, uh, Timmy Chalamet. That's how you say his last name. Timothy Chalamet and Zendaya for Dune. Now, why am I talking about this? Well, Chalamet is a Capricorn, like like Jesus. You know, some would say December twenty fifth is Jesus's birthday. Allegedly, not in the Bible, but don't grill me on that. You've got your Capricorn sacrifice, sacrifice, Capricorn rules sacrifice. That's where the word comes from. And then you've got Zendaya. I don't know her birthday. Wouldn't even dare to Google it. Not going to occupy my brain space with such a horrendous face any more than I need to. <laughs> but basically, she. Okay, so the whole thing about Dune is that he's a messiah, right? And I, I wasn't, like, I'm not super obsessed with this movie. It didn't really matter. I'm just eating lunch. But then I notice there's a battle, and there's a fight scene. And the, the sun eclipses. And it's right before or after multiple conversations where he's like, I don't want to be the Messiah, Mom. And they're like, she's like, you need to be the Messiah. The people are calling him Messiah, Messiah. And Dune just, like, came out. Or it's, like, in the process, you know, in theaters or whatever. The second one and i couldn't help but notice they're literally just ramming it down people's throats with the two like all that teen heartthrob actors right now everyone's into dune no one would ever be into dune dune is so obscure but now it's like tiktok famous like it's mm. every 16 year old's like buying dune you know and, thinking and it's in the desert and the book is in the desert oh yeah it's very it's very political like Middle era. East. Yeah, like Arrakis. 
Exactly. Yeah. I Isn't there a the Shaddam? I love the book. Shaddam. I listen to the audio book. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm never going to watch the movie, but the mm-hmm. book, oh my God, next level. Absolutely Dude. next level. I love it. Yeah. So basically they're ramming it everyone down, down everyone's throat that you've got this Messiah event with mm. the eclipse. And he's a Capricorn. But Zendaya is there too, just kind of as like the Disney agent to sell everyone on like the movie they never have watched anyway. You know, it's like it's like Taylor Swift going to the Super Bowl. You know, mm. people tuning in who never would have before. But um, so dude, it's like tuning uh, in. It's predictive <laughs> programming, is what you're saying in a very, yeah. very yeah. major way. And there's a reason yeah. why Dune has had this massive push within the last mm. three to four months. It's in preparation for this event. Yeah, that's so what you're saying. Because Dune's been around forever, dude. Dune's been a, a novel since like at least the 80s, I want to say. The novel is yeah. fantastic, but this push we've seen with these movies, it's not organic, and it's because of this ritual, is what you're saying. Essentially, right? to legitimize a holy war, to get uh, young Americans all uh, juiced up and hey, yeah, we got to go over to the to the Dune, uh, to these lands where there's these primitive the people. Yeah, to the desert. And the and what are the primitive? I mean, Zendaya's uh, people in the film, in the story, they, they live on the outskirts, the Fremen, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, what are they, like Muslims, like uh, desert folk, you know? Yeah. Well, I'm pretty I mean, sure so, Zendaya yeah. is from the Midwest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The actor, yeah. yeah. But but in the story, right, it's setting well, up this Atlantic. thing where, hey, soldiers have got to go and fight in the Middle East. It's like Iraq War II. It's like, you know, another uh, push to go over there. And have a big old uh, meat grind of human sacrifice ritual again, right? Yes. No reason. Also, in the fir- in the first Dune, there was like a mass blood blooding ritual in the first right. movie, where the the certain tribe like gets mercenaried by the other, and they are like blood ritual people, and you mm-hmm. see this whole chanting event. But whatever, you know, mm. we're not going to dwell too much on Hollywood nonsense. We're not preoccupied with Hollywood fairy tales, mm-hmm. like you might see on the robert sepper channel or something like that you know where it's just hollywood this hollywood that hollywood you know it's just uh, but it's interesting uh, timing it's very interesting yeah. timing that yeah. it's and it's so astroturf yeah. so pushed down everyone's throat right now and yeah. then what is this what is about to kick off over there speaking yeah. of you know, hollywood potentially in, huge things in in reference to the red heifer event i just visualized ben shapiro in his car bed playing <laughs> nintendo 64 fucking box of cereal and he's so excited for this event like it's like saturday oh, yeah. morning cartoons or something oh and yeah like i'm He'll not be gonna live streaming it on daily why this whole thing is ridiculous so <laughs> yes guys, i mean how can you not mo- like laugh at this it's- we 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 brought up we brought up the point already about <laughs> two eclipses <laughs> happening every year so you know dune's pushing this eclipse narrative like oh you know it really spooks I've found that eclipses are one of the best ways to spook people out. Yeah. We'll just get spooked the fuck out. And even non superstitious people get so spooked out. So this is a textbook colonizer, Cohen conspiracy, uh, you know, conquistador tactic, pretty much. You guys want to hear a good one? You want to know what they're doing to us right now, guys? You want to know what they're doing? You know, when the conquistadors would come into the Caribbean? And they'd sail in with their big, you know, Rolls Royce boats and the little tribal fishermen who'd literally never seen a white person in their life or like any technology was just like freaked out. And they'd be like, oh, my God, you know, are you guys gods that hang out with them? They'd shake their hands. They'd exchange some goods. They'd be like, OK, you guys aren't gods. But still, the technology is overwhelming. They might be from heaven or angels or something like that. So the, the natives in Florida and the Caribbean, they would, you know, be weary. And they'd, they were also superstitious, and they'd kind of start off thinking the conquistadors were gods with their metal, you know, armor and beards and mm. um, horses. And they'd never seen a horse. I mean, this is so overwhelming. You know, culture shock is an understatement. And you've got... All right, so that, that wears off a little bit, but you're still on edge. And then you, you've got these conquistadors... In order to maintain their mystique, in order to maintain their their god status in the in the eyes of the people, um, sometimes they would do like parlor tricks. 
they would do parlor tricks from like Europe and just freak the fuck out of the natives. Mm. <laughs> like, you know, where, you know, which cup is the ball in or in yeah. stuff like that. But one of the tricks they would do that comes, comes through to us in the, I don't know if you guys hear the horse, you see the horses back there. Yeah. Wow. I can't quite see him yeah. in the garden Lately, of Eden. The now I can see him. Oh wow. yes. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Beauties. That's it. He knows he's on camera. He's talking. Oh, and oh, look yeah. who we got here. <laughs> who we got here. What's up, mister? <laughs> what Aaron. a Sagittarius environment. <laughs> What's up, Aaron? I'm on the back of my van here. It's fucking sweet. Pointing out to the uh, farm. But so nice out. Um so one of the parlor tricks that the conquistadors would do when they'd roll into the Caribbean and roll up on a new pack of, you know, tribe or something, they'd want to terrify them or establish dominance. They would say they would time their coming if they knew they had a, you know, a big, big, uh, like, town. Oh, whoops, sorry, still. If they knew they had a big town or, like, empire or king, resistance they wanted to take away they would time their coming for an eclipse and you couldn't uh, you couldn't pull this on the, the maya or the aztec you know they had their or the inca you know they had their own calendars and stuff like that but when you've got um when you've got a smaller people like tribal they don't really have like a vault with like records or they know about the equinox and stuff but they probably can't time eclipses as good as a bigger people would so they'd come in the spanish the conquistadors and they would say the leader would go up to their leader and say hey you know turn over the keys basically let us take over the village you know you, you can stay leader but we're going to run the show and we've got some things we want to do on this part of town and just stay out of our way and, you know, show us support if we need it, if we're fighting someone else. That would usually be their pitch. Starting off, you know, I'm not saying they're good guys or anything, but they wanted to work things out to, get, you know, have a foothold somewhere they'd never been before. So they'd go up to these tribal leaders and say, hey, you know, bend the knee and mm -hmm. we'll be we'll be good to go. If they showed resistance, if they said, you know, fuck you guys, we don't think you're gods, we don't think you're anything better than us, we don't think you're anything, they'd say, okay, we'll be back, and when we come back, we're going to take your son, mm. and we will prove to you that we are agents of the divine. Wow. And they would come back to that tribe right, right before a solar eclipse, Jeez. and they had, they had the records. And they would come and they would say, they'd give another warning. Okay. Last chance. Three days from now, I will take your son. We will take your son away. Or, or, or they wouldn't give the final warning, whatever. They're just eclipse and then boom, they'd show up right after the eclipse again and say, okay, we showed you. The sky darkened. The, you know, the world dimmed, everyone freaked out, the women screamed. Um, very superstitious. And they'd come back after the eclipse and say, hey, we... Sorry, fucking bugs. Um, we're going to take your son away again. We did that. Our magic did that. And if you don't bend the knee, we're going to take it for even longer. We took it for what, in, you know, an hour. We'll take it for a whole day next time. Don't te don't test us. And for people who's like super dependent on the crop and the yield and you know direct living with nature, you'd be terrified. Yeah. And this was a big time parlor trick that they would pull, and you could only pull it, you know, on you couldn't pull it to the same to two people next door, two weeks from each other. But you could pull it on a big enemy that you wanted to terrify. If you were confident they didn't have, you know, the uh, most experienced astrologers, you knew that you could uh, pull one over on them.
that's what they would do. There's recorded instances of that. I forget the names, but you can look it up. Um, mm -hmm. Also, the Zulu, or one of the Zulu-related tribes, uh, massacred a whole British fort during an eclipse. Um, one of the bloodiest encounters, the deadliest in single battle in British military mm -hmm. history was... Uh, was this uh, African tribe massacred and, them on a, a uh, eclipse? eclipse. Sorry. And, yeah. and the film Zulu with Michael Caine is fake news. I only just found this out recently. I used to love it's a great movie, but it's so like well, British did it with guns and machinery. Uh, it's it's a propaganda film where they actually lost, and um, yeah, they were they were massacred by the the Zulu hordes. But in order to save face, they just made that movie where they actually one and they shot them all and all that kind of stuff so yeah. yeah so guys we talked about that's just one little you know that's the parlor trick they're pulling on us right now yeah we're, we're the villagers who don't know any better and yes we know this eclipse is coming up but they're using that superstition they're using it we're all anticipating this oh oh you know it's all good you know what greater marker is there that something's happening than the sun being blotted out mm. and they're going to use that all the superstition surrounding it but then you know that's the end of that that's as yeah. much as we'll we'll say to that i really just want to sum up my original point no one cares god doesn't care any lesser evil deities that they might be appeasing by doing this are just a little like karmic loan sharks that god allows to operate under him because <laughs> he literally doesn't care and is not threatened at all by their weak, shallow domain, you know, on Earth. So we talked about how the eclipses happen twice a year. Um, no one cares about this one. It's just like the next two eclipses will be in over and over. Well, there's even a better point here. The horses love being on camera. They never make this much noise. Um... There's another point here. The eclipse is not that special. Two a year. Both of them are going over Texas, by the way. Not Israel. But then let's talk about the sacrifices themselves. We can't really hear the horses. It's okay. That's okay. He's yeah. just sneezing. sneezing. Right. You've got... Why are these four cows any more sacred than any other cow they're not and even if you wanted to soak up that that um you know eclipse juice they they're not even going to be in texas for the eclipse they're already in israel if you're trying to like soak up that x spot on the map you've already missed out on that and i don't think they'll do, do anything anyway but then also you know Elephant in the room, guys. Red heifer in the room. And our, we already kind of mentioned it with the RB sandwich, with the Burger 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 King, uh, you know, uh, sacrifice. Burger King, uh, false flag, false religious event. Yeah. Well, let's just do the math on this. So there's two and a half eclipses every year. Well, how many cows get slaughtered every year? Well, it's about a million. About a million <laughs> cows every year are mm. slaughtered. And no one bats an eye. God doesn't, you know, return the Messiah. He also doesn't, you know, flood the planet. So mm. it's, you know, either way you look at it, it's not a triggering event. Cows are slaughtered every day. Sorry, a million every day. Sorry, did I say every year? A million cows every are slaughtered day. every day. Oh, no, just wait, Jimmy. I was shocked to see how low that was. A million cows uh, every day are slaughtered. So who the fuck cares about four ginger ones in a dry dust ball of a country that is not going to change at all just from this happening? And I, hey, I'm very sorry for the Muslims who are going to have to you know, set up shop somewhere else and stuff like that. I don't like that at all. But in terms of it giving... Judaism power, it won't. It's not going to bring the new Messiah any more than an Arby's sandwich will. 
But mm -hmm. one million cows a day, that's not even going to be a drop in the pond. Not even a drop in the pool. Not even a drop in the kiddie pool. That's like, you know, and nothing. And... And, and it also, what I just recently found yesterday was that there was articles coming out in The Guardian and, and different um, uh, Israeli papers about um, a crowdfunding um, attempt to um, genetically modify cows to make them fully red. Because the, so the scriptural reference people probably know, I, I can pull it up here. It's it's saying that um, a heifer. So this is in the Bible. This is this is what they're basing the whole thing on. It's saying the the prophecy, the prophecy of the temple being rebuilt. Uh, a heifer had to not only be without spot, where it, wherein is no blemish, and upon which never came yoke. So it's never been yoked. So it's, it's never um, like pulled a, a plow or something. But I would I could interpret that as um, has never been in a as yoked by man, like, um, in a cage in a, in within fences. Whereas these are obviously they grew up in captivity and they are in a cage in Israel right now. So, yeah. you know, already it's, it's proved, but horns, hooves, and even eyelashes had to be red. Now I see this as a kind of like, look, yeah, you can build the temple when pigs fly, when hell freezes over, because this is pretty much impossible without so Jimmy. So such a good point because the philosopher's stone, I believe, is red. And the reason why that's so significant is because it can't be replicated naturally in nature. Uh -huh. So so what they're saying here is I'm in agreement with you. They they want this cow to be almost GMO, it seems. Yeah. Right. Well, it, that old GMO. Guys, we're having an impossible meat sacrifice. Yeah. Going yeah. On here. Okay. yeah. It's an impossible it's, burger charade. It's a it's GMO plant-based factory GMO plant fake eclipse cow yeah it's preposterous yeah and yeah they and also guys so by it's not the even way real. the big takeaway here i wish we should have started with this but you know i get i i'm not looking at my notes um what does sacrifice mean just to venerate just to observe with holiness that's all sacrifice means so the burnt offering you're not killing incense when you light incense, are you? No. So one could even make the argument, and it's a strong argument, very strong argument, that sacrifice has nothing to do with slaughtering. Sacrifice has to do with veneration. So the cow, look at how they, do they slaughter cows in India? No. They mm -hmm. venerate them. That's sacrifice. Take a take an hour out of your day and you know, hang out with the cow. As stupid as it sounds, hanging out with your cat teaches you a whole, you know, avenue of things about life. Hanging out with your dog teaches you a whole, you know, set of things, principles. Hanging out with a cow, observing cows, meditating on the image of a cow, meditating in the presence of a cow, all these things bring about wisdom. A certain type of wisdom. Yes, it's, you know, nature. But Christianity is the religion of nature. It is the religion of animal rights. It is the religion of vegetarianism. It is the religion of, you know, what would Jesus do? Jesus would not sacrifice a cow. Definitely not. He would not need a cow sacrificed to bring him back. Any way you look at it, even if it's, oh, Jesus is just a sun, sun god, deception. Okay, well, what's a what's a cow sacrificed going to do change for the sun? Nothing. So, any way you look at it, the cow slaughter is not going to bring out any messiah. And hey, you heard about you heard about uh, one million cows a day. That's a shocker, right? Well, did you know two hundred million chickens are slaughtered every day? Yeah, two hundred million. That's unfathomable. Million chickens slaughtered every day. It is unfathomable, but it happens. Why does it happen and we don't know about it? Because slaughterhouses are required to be a certain distance from urban areas. Mm -hmm. So you never see them. You never see the carnage. No one can stomach to watch the vegan propaganda for more than a, a minute or two before they click away. 
oh, and yeah. say, say, oh, um, uh, Predator's eyes are all pointed forward. Um, I don't need to watch that. Uh, <laughs> wrong. Debunked. Sharks, eyes on the yeah. sides of their head. You know, the list goes on and on. And religiously with this, I mean, you know, we like most Christians in the Western America are Zionist, like the, the popular Christian churches, the m most churches. They, Unfortunately, yeah. Yes, there has been a Zionist capture. You can look into the history of that, into the Schofield Bible. It's all uh, Rothschild and Rockefeller funded. It's all been organized. There's a lot of money behind it. It didn't need to be this way. It wasn't going to be this way, but it was uh, pushed this way. So, you know, you talk about them. Now, these people, uh, they don't let their children watch Harry Potter. Why? Because that's sorcery, they say. That's witchcraft. They don't, it's not allowed. You know, I went, I went to school, a Christian school, and I was like, hey, how good's the latest Harry Potter? Oh, no one's seen it. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> but they are supportive 100% of a ritualistic blood sacrifice in Israel. Oh, why are you guys doing that? Oh, so that we can blow up the Islamic temple, rebuild our temple, bring, which will bring about the Antichrist yeah. and then the end of the world so that then everyone dies in a fireball and then Jesus comes back. Sorry, what? Yeah. That's literally what they believe. And I didn't know about this. Whitney Webb has been writing about this. Brilliant journalist. She's been writing about uh, three massive articles about the um, the Temple Institute and the, the Dome on the Rock, Alaska um, agenda to rebuild the third temple and the support of American Zionist Christian money and, and uh, religion is the only way that it's possible. Dude, it's the only way that they're allowed. It's uh, happening. The Christian Zionist thing has been blowing my mind for like the last yeah. six months because it's such yeah. a bizarre, like simple trick where Israel in the Bible is the house of God. OK, anywhere where people are meeting with the anywhere can be the house of God, really, in nature, you know, us hanging out, that can be considered a house of God. Right. That's what Israel is, the biblical Israel. It has nothing to do with the political state of Israel that yeah. was started by uh, Lord Rothschild well, in 1948. Well, actually, then, actually, it has everything exactly. to do with you're right, but it, it does have a, you're 100 percent right. But it actually does have an ancient basis. Did you know that the Greeks have a myth? ancient greeks you know people of the mediterraneans have like myths prophecies about israel you know in greece one of the origins for the word israel is chronos israel mm. literally means saturn to some really isis, isis ra and el mm. are father mary maria is Rhea, the wife of chronos joseph is chronos himself seth saturn the seth sunset oh wow and then you have the sun so yes it's the trinity but this again goes back to isis ra l l is saturn depending on who you ask l is lord lowered lowered down lord um elite. lord of this elite. world elite yeah boom yeah big word yeah elite l that's is in hebrew principle. right l is a l hebrew word El is the principal deity of the Phoenicians, too. So the, the Hebrews got almost everything they have from the Phoenicians. Also, Hebrew, guys, hate to burst a bubble here. Irish. Oh! He Hebrew means Irish. Yes. That is a Greek word for Ireland. Really? When you say Israel, that's what the Greek call Saturn. And they have a myth of Saturn as a titan escaping north to the british isles <sighs> jews escaping oh to the british isles so that could be about the irish being the original tribe of israel but it could also be about you know in the more recent interpretation um the state of israel r running away to britain and then having uh, to cause a couple world wars in order for yeah. britain to buy back the holy land and that's wow. Israel. And you see London is kind of has been there, was their home base until Israel got set back up. But um, yeah, the city of also, London, the financial yeah. capital of also, the world. Any no Christian can be a Zionist and call themselves a Christian. Why? Because Amen. you have the sacrifice coming up is the crux of this whole movement that the sacrifice must happen. 
in order to trigger these events. Any No Christian on the planet, no Christian is going to go to heaven while also promoting sacrifice. That is the most heretical stance in the world. Most heretical stance towards God and Christianity is that sacrifice, number one, has any legitimacy. Yeah. To believe that sacrifice has any legitimacy is antith antithetical to God and Jesus, Christianity. Right. Then to think that we need this sacrifice, that it's for our benefit and we're getting behind it, is an even further deviation from the truth, deviation from Christianity's principles. And this is not Christ this is not just Christianity's dog in the fight. Everyone's on the side of good. Nobody wants blood running down on the world stage for everyone to see. You know, as, as futile as it may be, no one should get behind this. No one will. No, if anyone had the whole story about it, no one would support it. But um, blah blah That's blah. It. A million cows a day, two hundred million chickens a day. These heifers are not going to make a drop in the ocean. No. And basically, um, it's performative. It's like a Broadway show. Look at that set. Look at the look at the shiny, glossy. Uh, you know, WWE thing. It's it, it's very performative. And is yeah. it not potentially, could you ask, you know, is it just sort of, look, we're serious about this. This is the prophecy and we, we have a right to this land because of the it says so here and we have a right to blow up whatever we want and kill whoever we want because it says so and we're doing the sacrifice because it says so. Isn't it sort of like a, doesn't it seem like a legitimization operation? You know, like they don't potentially they don't really believe it, but they're just doing it so that it looks like they have scriptural um, they have a scriptural right to. Yeah. Potentially. No, yeah, absolutely. And guys, the whole red, you know, the red being obsessed with red, the children of Abraham, the iron, the redness, uh, red none shield. of this. Rothschild. None of this, well, mm. boy, that's another thing, but none of this makes me think of Israel. Mm -hmm. Makes me think of Ireland. The mm -hmm. red-headed people. Oh, the yeah. The rosy ones. Okay? Why are they God's chosen? Oh, I don't know. Maybe because they've never colonized another people? Yeah. Ir <laughs> Ireland. We're seeing that play the, out right now. The least guilty people in the yeah. planet of colonization Oh, they migrate, and when they migrate, they dominate. But yeah. they don't they don't colonize in the way that other nations did. Finland, much the same. So what you're seeing is when I think of God's chosen people, do I look towards smug do I look for smugness? Do I look for arrogance? Do I look for, you know, a dependence on sin transferring, endless sin? Mm -hmm. transferring like is that what god's chosen people do deposit <laughs> their sins into blood sacrifice like day Why? in and day out Maybe like, just don't stop sin. sinning <laughs> stop <Yeah>. sinning <laughs> you know um also jesus says everyone can be like jesus and strive towards perfection and be without sin so whenever you walk into a church and they tell you you're a sinner and you're nothing and you're just a worthless wretch you're just a worm you know uh demonic antenna that is just like an alcoholic at aa oh it's not my fault i have a disease i'm riddled with demons and i'm a sin mm. fool and i am just a wretch who can do nothing and steer my destiny in any direction you know i, I can't that's false you can strive to perfection you, yeah. you by the way if you lock yourself in a room and only eat oranges all day long you can live a life free of sin now, can you live a life free of sin outside in the modern world? Well, try. Go for it. Try, you know? Why would anyone say, oh, we're only sinners. We can only sin. And that's the AA victim mindset. It's an excuse. One million percent. If you're in one of these sin confessional churches, you're in a glorified AA class. Mm -hmm. Literally. Um it's an excuse oh, yeah. why why you won't try harder. Oh, I can't because uh, it's I'm it's already it's already wasted for me. It's already yeah. ruined. I'm ruined already. You know, it's and an speaking, excuse. It's lazy. 
Speaking of the connection between AA and God and Catholicism, brings us right back to the Irish, right? Well, the Irish battle most with Catholicism, you could say, and not battle most, they, you know, adopted it, but they battle with alcoholism a ton. And you see the same kind of victim tactic being pulled on people in both of those institutions, like AA and Catholicism, is the guilt tripping, endless, endless guilt tripping. Oh, yeah. Big and time. things like that. But blah, blah, blah. When I, I was talking about red, Hibernia, you know, the word Heb, you ever hear someone call a Jew a Heb? Yeah. That comes from Hebrew or Heber. Hebrew comes from Hiber. Heber. That's ancient Greek for Irish. This is not some fringe conspiracy theory. Wow. Go look this up, guys. This. Okay. Who, who are the three people, the three progenitors of the Semitic people in the Old Testament? Scythians, Assyrians, and Sumerians. And you could say the Sumerians and Assyrians are almost the same. So you've got Sumer, Assyria, and the Scythians. Okay. Su Sumeria, Suomi, Finnish. Finnish. Phoenicians. Boom. Okay. Those are Norse. Those are Norse people. Big beards, big hats, dressed like Santa Claus, coming in and rewriting the whole script in the Mediterranean. Assyrians. What are the the Norse gods were known as? The Asur, the Asir, Asur, Assyrians. Okay. Then you have so Suomi, Sumeria, Sumeria. Both of those places are swampy, and that's where they get those names. Sumi, Suomi, yes. Mm, mm. Sumeria, Suomi, they're Finnish. The Phoenicians are Finnish too. Who who were the Phoenicians? Or who, you know, where did the Hebrew alphabet come from? Phoenician. Phoenician looks like runes. It's obviously runes from the north. So we're going to find here, there's no such thing as Semitic people in the sense that we think. They're really just a colony of northerners. And over time, they made some of them made their way back north. But that's where those big beard-growing genetics come from that you see all over the Mediterranean. The hairiest people on the planet, you know, in facial hair, are Mediterraneans and northerners, Norse, mm -hmm. the Vikings, the barbarians, the beards. There's barbarians in North Africa, Barbary Coast, and then there's barbarians in Germany and Scandinavia. Okay. Wow. Well, the Hiberia, Hibernia, we're going to see here that all of this Phoenician territory and Phoenician, you know, rewrite of history or rewriting history about the Phoenicians points to the Irish and the Scottish and the Celts and the Gauls being the original Phoenicians, the original Israelites, the original Hebrews. So what you've got is the Greeks, the Greek word for Ireland is Hibernia, Hibernians, mm. the Heber, Hiber. Now that's kind of similar to Hy uh, Hyperborea. Hyperborea mm. was Finland. Hyperborea was Finland. Pythias went to Scandinavia and wrote a lot of this down. But Hibernian means Irish, but it was also applied to people in Spain. Why? Because Spain used to be essentially Irish until the Muslims went through. Iberia? I Bingo. Iberia is the same word as Hebrew. That's why you have your Sephardic uh, Jews. Wow. Biggest, two biggest portions of Jews, you know, Sephardic and Ashkenazi. And, you know, mm -hmm. you can you can say, oh, well, they this people converted. We're going to be talking about that another time. Whole, whole conversation for another day. But as to who's the real this or real that. But in terms of the words and the names, Hebrew means Celtic. And Iberia is an extension of that. You had Hibernia was Ireland itself. Then Iberia is uh, Spain and parts of France. You know, the Iberian Peninsula. That's the same word as Hebrew. 
and Gibraltar is the Hebrew altar, the threshold from Mediterranean to the Atlantic, the port to Gaul. Portugal. Port to Gaul. Portugal uh, is where you'd leave the Mediterranean and make your way around the Spanish and French Portuguese coast up towards the British Isles to where the Phoenicians were actually from, where they actually had their big, large territories with plenty of wood to build ships and plenty of pine trees and, you know, land for cattle to supply them and stuff when they're leave when they're making voyages. They, they, the Phoenicians blockaded the entrance to the Mediterranean for, you know, a thousand years, if not more, you know, some, uh, some breaks in that timeline, but they controlled the Mediterranean for a thousand years, if not a lot more than that. And they were there when Greece came about. They were there when Rome came about. They expand the Phoenician empire, if you can even call it that, Carthaginian you know, um, encompassed the Greek and the Roman empires. They saw their fall in the Roman em against the Roman empire, you know, with Hannibal and all that. But leading up to that, they ran the show. They mm -hmm. blockaded the, the Mediterranean. So there's only one way out through, you know, right there by Morocco and Portugal. And you have to squeeze through a narrow strip of, of water and if you blockade that, you control that. And yeah. mm -hmm. anyone who lives in that little sandbox is not really going to know much outside of that sandbox, no matter how great they are. So the Greeks, you know, the Romans, they didn't have a clear picture of North Europe and the Irish and Scottish until that blockade was removed and the Phoenicians were out of the way. Then, then they started exploring, oh, the Atlantic coast of Spain and France and up to the British Isles. And, but before then, that was all Phoenician. That was locked down by the Phoenicians. So they, they couldn't even really tell you who the Phoenicians were as a fact. They just knew that they had colonies near Israel. What were they named? Sidon, Poseidon, huh. uh, Tyre, here, Tyre. Well, Go look up Tyre. Number one, that's a Germanic and Anglo-Saxon deity. They all are. All, almost all the Phoenician deities are. But the original Phoenicians were not, you know, terrible blood sacrificers. They were just Celts. They were traders from the north, from the north coming into the Mediterranean, decked out in jewelry and you know fine goods and uh, had the alphabet. They had the alphabet. No one had the alphabet. No one had a written language that was phonetic like they did. So they dominated. And everywhere they went, they could teach people the phonetic alphabet and trade quicker than anyone else. And so blah, blah, blah. if wow. I were to yeah. summarize what you just laid laid down for everybody, there's a clear connection between the Old Testament Hebrews who are the hyper hyper, hyper I can't even say it. You guys know what I'm saying. Hibernians. Yeah. Yes, right which are also the Irish and the Phoenicians. There's this common thread. If I were to just to describe what you just said in like a couple sentences or less. Yes. The Irish are at the very least descended from Israel, if not the primary descendants of Israel, the legitimate descendants of Israel. And the words show us this, the Greek interpretation of history shows us this but also how these nations behave on the world stage shows us this um the beauty of the music coming out of some of these countries these two countries mm -hmm. de determines this as a fact you, and uh, this is no bashing on you know anyone have you ever heard an enya coming at, come out of israel have you ever this is the heard world economic forum singer lady <laughs> the you know, Enya is what elves sound like. Enya yeah. is what the heavens sound like. You ever, when you're wanting to calm down, do I play yeah. Old Testament, you know, I, you know, uh, Sumerian or, you know, Israeli music? No, that's pretty jarring, actually. It's pretty uh, kind of, you know, unnerving. And it, it has its uses, but... Semitones. 
Black Irish, Knight. Yes. Irish harp music. Yeah. Beautiful. That's tranquility right there. That's, you know, the harp. The harp was, is the symbol of Ireland for a number of reasons. But number one, because music is like our separation from the other animals. Like, you know, we can talk, but other animals can talk. Birds can sing, but can they arrange? Can they do orchestras? The harmony is, it's liquid architecture. It's, you know, all these things, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Frequency, cathedrals, it's choir, the organ. It's, I wanna, it's power. I want to sum this up about Hebrew in Gibraltar. Gibraltar has the word Hebrew in it. G-I-B-R. When you say someone's speaking gibberish, you're <laughs> saying they're speaking Hebrew. I don't know what you're saying. Gibberish, Hebrew. You know, like it's written the other right to left, left to right. I can't read that, you know. Well, Gibraltar is the Hebrew altar. And oh. gibber, gibberish is saying Hebrew because a G goes soft in many languages. So when you say Gibraltar, Jeber, you're saying Heber, Hiber, Heber, same word, Gibraltar, Iberia, Hibernia, these are all the same word, and they show the closer you get to Ireland, the more Israeli you're actually getting, and the Irish know this, many of them, the Scottish know this, many of them, Scotland's the only country in the world that's never persecuted the Jews, now that's that's you know for different reasons than the ADL is you know operating for. That's it's not the same approach, but there's something to this with the tribes, the houses of Israel residing in the British Isles in ancient times and more recently. You have your you know certain families returning there, but mm. the whole thing is confirmed in books like Irish Wisdom Preserved in the Bible and Pyramids, Connor McDory. Um, there's a whole, you know, you've got your Hebrides up there in Hebrides. Ireland, too, in your Hebrides. Ireland. Hebrides. You have your Faroe Islands. Faroe. Faroe. You've got uh, the Jacobites in Scotland, all these things. Um, you know, it was common in ancient uh, Mesopotamian kingdoms to find a large amount of hermaphrodites or cross-dressing too, believe it or not. And what did they make the Scottish start doing as a cultural trend? Dressing in skirts. Sorry, Scottish people. There's nothing cool about dressing in a skirt. Oh. That's literally a pullover. That's a, that's a rabbi. That's a rabbi trick that they did. It's breezy. <laughs> um, no, it's just girls dressing. It's just men dressing up like girls. Uh, um, but yeah. So yeah. let's see if there's anything else here. That's all. I, that's all I had written down. Arabic really. singing uh, and Irish singing. You know, Arabic uh, or Middle Eastern cultural music. If you listen to it, right after listening to some Irish, Celtic clanad chieftains the singing the way the vocalist um sings all of the semi notes I, don't, I can't speak music theory but you know all the semitones semi notes in the vocals is very similar to arabic singing um or to that yeah. is the read that region cultural real quick about music. the uh real quick about the dress wearing you know we, you guys were talking earlier when you mentioned um the controllers the hollywood you know elite forcing mm -hmm. black men to wear dresses and stuff like that yeah. well the controllers the new yorkers we'll just call them have been forcing scotland to wear a dress for years you know how they move into a population and feminize the population <laughs> and take over control and the men are just like you know oblivious unfortunately they pulled one over on scotland with that ireland never put on the dress that's why Ireland has always been the thorn in their side. Um, yeah, that's why, you know, who are the two people with the most red hair in the world? The Irish and Scottish and Jews. 
red hair, Phoenician, de Phoenician blood. Now, um, most Ashkenazi Jewish people are mixed with a lot of Asian DNA. That's why they are significantly different from Irish, who have pretty much zero Asian DNA at all. Mm. So that's the main difference between Ashkenazi. Um, there's also a huge Neanderthal uh, genetic, you know, um, contribution. Which is a disposition to um, groupthink and um, collectivist. Uh, we all have to line up. We all have to circle the wagons. We all have, to, if you attack one of us, we will all attack you, right? That, that, uh, that sort of um, culture, you know, it's, it's very different to the Irish individual of like, no, I, I think this, and this is me. And this is, you know, it's less um, collectivist mindset, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, well, anything else, guys? Anything we, we ought to talk about? We could read some Genesis if you guys got time or... I just wanted to add one one more thing about this uh, temple that I found. I found this today. Uh, so the rebuilding of the third temple uh, after the destruction of the Dome on the Rock is being pushed and has been pushed since uh, I think the 1980s by a group called the Temple Institute, which is like an NGO in Israel um, that has a lot of you know money backing, um, and it's been pushing to do whatever whenever it needs to to blow up this um, mosque, the Alaska Mosque rebuild the third temple um, to then, you know, f facilitate all of the long-term plans of Zionism, which with everything you were talking about, about who's the real, um, you know, Hebrews or anything like this, one could argue that the Rothschilds um, back in the, you know, 1600s decided to uh, work towards funding their own country where they can actually uh, en masse and publicly do these Canaanite rituals which is what they're doing right now you know so this isn't this is not necessarily ancient scriptural things this is just a more of a modern uh rich guy rothschild canaanite thing that they're wanting to do with the uh cross-dressing and all that kind of that kind of stuff um so the temple institute is put forward if you look up the temple institute on facebook they have their own uh page on there and i did that this morning and the kind of things that they are posting right now about the red heifer, about the sacrifice, it is so, they're so excited. Uh, it's brutal. They, they also keep posting pictures of what Jerusalem will look like without the Dome on the Rock, but with the temple rebuilt. It looks very industrial. It's fascinating, this, the, the images of it. It's very square. It's very industrial. And it has a one big chimney with constant smoke pouring out of it. Wow. A chimney. What kind of temple has a big chimney that's always got smoke coming out of it? I don't, you know, it's not. It's not what you picture when you think of temples. And they are going through in great detail of the architecture. What will be the temple? The north side will have this and that. And there is one post where it's talking about the firstborn sacrifice chamber. Okay, and I, I'm. I know this sounds insane. I can pull it up if we want to look at it, but everyone can just go on Facebook, type the Temple Institute, check out what they're um what they're posting on there. It's pretty kooky stuff. Uh, they're saying, yeah, the the firstborn uh, slaughter will happen in here. And uh, are they talking about firstborn cows or they, you know what do, what do they mean? Maybe I'm just um maybe I'm just too stupid to realize what they're actually saying, but it's it, they have a firstborn sacrifice well they're chamber. yeah so they're rebuilding the temple and that part of the temple is probably going to include will include a room or a portion where firstborn sacrifice has been was you know like allocated to that room right so they're going to rebuild it like true to the original and i think that's what what the message is here I don't think now they're, you know, uh, judging by who we're talking about, they are capable of human sacrifice, but I don't think mm -hmm. they would print that like to the public. I think they are just saying, oh, this is the room where that happened and we're rebuilding it true to the original. Yeah. Yeah. I have some, right. uh, I have some closing thoughts here. Um, and it, it'll end with the topic of uh, sacrifice. Cause that's kind of what we've been talking about. When you mentioned Dune, 
you know, one of the most precious resources in Dune is water. And I see, sort of see that as a uh, symbolic of ports, the ports of the Phoenicians and things of that nature that you mentioned. Um, and it, also in Dune, I just want to mention real quick, the big thing they trade is spice. And it's, it's sort of a metaphor for vice, right? And, you know, this whole stream has been about Jesus Christ, God, and how that is antithetical. It's totally antithetical to what we see with this red heifer ceremony, because Jesus made the ultimate sacrifice for us. He sacrificed for others rather, to, rather than sacrificing animals, right? And I think that's the huge, big message um, people should walk away with, is that, you know, sacrifice isn't about this Burger King ceremony. Sacrifice can be your time, your your will, your love, your prayers, whatever the case may be. It's not always this this horrendous thing. And I would argue that human human sacrifice does take place currently, sometimes on a mass scale, and oftentimes it's some of your favorite rappers. And I think Longo and I will be talking about that on Tuesday. That's going to be epic. Um, other than oh, yeah. that. Um, we mentioned the whole mud flood thing before when you're standing on a mud flood and you adhere to that content world, right? When you're standing on a mud flood, you have no roots, you have no soil. It's similar to mm. standing on a uh, spinning earth. It's just, you have no idea where you're going, where you've been and what you need to do moving forward. Um, so yeah, those are kind of my closing thoughts, but yeah, I'm down to hang out and just, Talk about whatever you guys want to talk about. Is war not a human sacrifice? It's massive. When, huge, when huge has sacrifice. there been a great? Oh, thank goodness we had that huge war. Right. And 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 all these millions of people, these these young boys, these teenagers, were sent out. You know, World War One, World War Two, both Christians. You know, in the trenches, and they they play they play soccer, play football on Christmas Day. And then because because they did that and they they became friends with each other and showed pictures of each other's girlfriends, they were all shot by the officers. You know, it is a I like how Topher Christopher Gardner talks about the meat grinder, Vietnam, yeah. all these wars. They didn't do. There was no positives that came from it. Typical Bringing the black Florida juice, guy busting out the coke. That's right. Happy Easter. Yeah. Can I before you before yeah yeah, you can check it out on Facebook. That's awesome. <laughs> Hey, Jeffrey. Happy Easter, Jeffrey. What's up, guys? A little Happy black drink. A little black drink to kick off the Easter. Yes. Pour, pour one out for the homeboys. Yeah. Not a good Easter without a little bit of Coke. Thanks. <laughs> yep. The good, the good kind. <laughs> Mexican. Yep. Cane sugar. Oh, shit. Where did that go? Oh, I had to Easter. bounce, maybe. I got to bounce, too, actually. Yeah, Benz. Happy Easter, y'all. <laughs> sure, yeah. But thanks for having me on, Doctor. Thanks for joining us, Jimmy and Stingray. I, I don't mean to spread any fear, or I, I'm just I just find it all hilarious. I do find pretty much everything hilarious. I think it's the best way to view things. Here he is. Um, yeah, I accidentally pressed X on the wrong thing, and I accidentally, <laughs> accidentally just X when the party spot. was getting good. Yeah, that's it. The coke's out. Yeah. Um, but I, I just, I, all I mean to say is, look, this is some kooky stuff. Okay. Uh, these, all these things cannot happen without the support of America, the biggest, most powerful military and the, uh, the Zionist Christian church, which is the, you know, the majority of the Christians in America. Let's, let's ask some questions. Let's be like, Hey guys, are you guys not into sorcery and human sacrifice? And I mean, blood sacrifice, <laughs> are you guys like into, uh, love? and uh, peace right because that's what i'm into in, and enjoyment and celebration and food and and beauty and you know the sun brightness i don't know it's all funny yeah, but i just want nice. everyone to have a really happy easter yes and uh let's see what happens <laughs> broski bear long ago have your thoughts on smoking weed changed nope they've intensified <laughs> a little bit probably but, um... <laughs> why would they change smoke till we drop around here only low iq sensitive emotional hormone sensitive people shy away from cannabis that's my that's my experience <laughs> it's or, not really you know, the devil's lettuce 
and to answer any questions in the chat, this is a cigar. It's not, I mean, cannabis is great, but just, just on this particular uh, public uh, point, I was smoking a nice cigar rolled locally here in South Florida by a Cuban gentleman uh, down in a couple of blocks away from the bookstore. And so, yeah. Yeah, weed casts out demons. And people say, oh, what about the rappers? Um, they'd be a lot worse off without the weed. Trust me. Okay. <laughs> Trust me. The weed's the only thing keeping them upright from all the lean and alcohol <laughs> that they... And, you know, Wiz Khalifa, okay, prove to me that weed does something bad to you. Who's the rapper that smokes the most weed? Wiz Khalifa, not even close. Snoop? Have you ever heard? Have you ever heard his music? Snoop. Okay, Snoop's almost there. Snoop. No, Snoop. Snoop smokes a ton of weed too. They mm -hmm. might be equal for all I know. I don't know. Might be more. But Snoop's music is notably less violent than all rappers, even though he's probably actually killed someone. Yeah. yeah. Wiz Khalifa, who smokes, I think, the most weed and doesn't smoke tobacco anymore. Mm -hmm. I think he switched to only joints now. His music. I hate to say it. It's cringe. It's not my thing. My, you know, Jeffrey loves Wiz Khalifa. I can get down to some Wiz Khalifa. You know why? He's literate. He's, this is where people might not like it. He's nothing but good vibes. Mm, Smoking like Bob Marley. From sunrise to sunset. Guys probably never even held a gun in his life. Smoking weed all day makes you peaceful and a lover of mankind, a lover of humanity. He literally just says, I fuck hotter girls than you, and I get more money than you. Suck it. No, I, I know I'm going to gang gang bang you. No, I'm going to catch you slacking. I'm going to you know, fill you full of holes in the club. So to me, the whole we rapper argument against weed is debunked because the rapper who smokes the most weed is by far the least violent. Um, that's got to count for something. The violence and the one, comes, and he doesn't. He doesn't take any other stuff, as far as I'm, as far as I know. So Wiz Khalifa also, also spit out by the mainstream. Why? Because he doesn't promote gang violence. Yeah. So I'm not a big Wiz Khalifa guy, but I respect him. He's the number one rapper in the world, as far as I'm concerned, because he doesn't talk about shooting, killing people. Which is cool. I listen to shooting and killing people music too. That stuff's also good. But comes from the producers though, doesn't it? Not from yeah. the weed. Anyway, you guys have a great rest of your Easter. Yep. I'll see you, Jimmy. Peace. Latest. Happy Easter. All right, Longo. Happy Easter, man. It seems like you're in a cool location. It's like a farm. It looks awesome. It's completely yeah. Sagittarian where you're at. It's like the horses, the open space, and the van. So pretty cool. Yep. All right, guys. Peace. All right, Al Dog. Go check Happy him out. Al Dog buys his book, The Charter. Do it. Happy Have Easter, everyone. Day. See you guys Tuesday. Peace.